Recording in progress. Okay, so I am calling the meeting to order at, uh, at 5 o'clock, and we need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, before you do that, we need to amend the agenda. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, just to, for some discussion about the, this is Liz, you want to just amend it, what you want to do? The capital with the town Update hall? Update on the? On the RFPs. Yes. So yeah. we want to do that on other business? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. There's no action to participate right. in Liz's Just a dis update. Yeah, little uh, update. Okay. Okay. Got it. Anything else? That's it. Okay. So motion to go into executive session? Uh, I'll make a motion to go into executive session regarding confidential attorney-client communications um, made for the purpose of providing legal services to the select board permitted under... VSA 313A1F. I'll second. That. Thank you. Seconded by Victor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are in do executive you session. Do you want session. So, do you want anyone yeah. into the executive session? Or oh, we should say. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We'll so include. I'll amend that uh, to include Dorinda um, and uh, the rest of the select board, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't need me. So I'm going to make uh, Randy. And, and I guess I need to I need to specify Rob as well. And Rob, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to put other people in the waiting room, and then I'm going to make you the host. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Orca needs to come downstairs. What's that? You should put that on a great big screen so you can. We're talking about can't that. See. Okay. All right. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so. All right. Listers. Listers. Okay, the <laughs> first one is the change in the acreage of Mary Jo Davis's. She actually called us and said she had it surveyed and it shows on all her tax paperwork it's 0.2 and it should be 0.43. Yeah. So I double checked with the survey, made sure it was correct, and the guy from the state came and helped me work on it, updated it in the system, and it changes the appraisal value of. Fifteen hundred dollars difference. Wow. We just got to send her a new tax bill, and yeah. But you should have the errors and emissions in front of you for that. Mm -hmm. Well, her tax bill doesn't change by fifteen hundred. But just yeah, no. But I'm surprised how much. But the amount of the appraisal changes by yeah. fifteen hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first one. Okay. So we need a motion on that. Yes. I move that we um, approve the request of the listeners to change the acreage of Mary Jo Davis's parcel from 0.2 to 0.43 okay. on the 22 okay. town Second that. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. The second one is the budget. Um, uh, Mitchell Benton was in last week uh, working on this with me. The um, software that for some reason, you folks thought it was going to cost mm -hmm. a lot. Um, Axiomatic, it's called Vermont Pie, and can it's actually run through the state, so their software is free to all the towns. Shelly, so can you hold on just one there. second? Sure. Uh, can you guys on Zoom hear that? Yes. Okay. Uh, Shelly, can you speak up a little bit? And, you um, want me to speak louder? You see everybody really trying to be quiet now. <laughs> Well, we're using the we're using the microphone on the okay. computer, so. And these two. All right, so um, according to Mr. Benton, because Vermont Pie is going to be taking over current use homestead and grand list, this year was sales validation that had to be in by October first, which we got in. But um, the other ones are going to be coming on slower, and all it all interfaces with Cama, which is owned by Nemric. That's the one that we work with now. So he suggested because we're new that we hire Nemric, like we did last year, to do some of the um, permit reappraisals and to work with us. So I think you've got a copy of that also, because what she told me is that if the duties are the same, the rate will remain the same, because I reached out for her for a quote. And so she gave me last year's quote, and then she gave me kind of a, a blank form that it wouldn't let me edit, so I kind of highlighted it. And I checked off the things that I know that we might not be familiar with because we're new, but I also put on each one um, at the bottom, all checked as needed by listers. So anything that where we can do the legwork instead of paying out a lot of money to her, we will do that so that we just need her on things that we're not familiar with. But if everybody wants to review that at some point, I can, um, I can get back to them. And she worked for a number of 
They're the ones that did it first last year. Right. So, so they're not willing to give us a set amount because it's dependent on hours that they work. Right. So Annette and I were talking about actually going out to some of the properties like we did with you, Vic, and the ones to see if the permits are done, take pictures, so that saves that part of the work for Marla, so she does the, the sketch of the other part of the system that we're not that familiar with yet, so that when we do hire, we don't have to, eight hours a day, just her driving around looking at properties. Right. So if right. we can do that. Um, the other thing is, I mentioned to Sarah, that we have to go out for folk for a, a town-wide appraisal. I guess all the towns have to, and that's gonna be done 25, 26. I've already worked on the RFP for that, request for quote to send out to uh, other suppliers. Got to keep in mind again, by then, we're going to have to have somebody that will interface well with our camo, which is owned by Nemeric. Otherwise, we're going to be doing a lot of input and in things that don't transfer over. So that's something to keep in mind for a future day. So in terms of our budget process for this year, which of course is coming right up, right around the corner, I would almost say that the same as last year for them, because we're totally new last year, and I, and I would think that there's a lot more that we can do this year. So if we can even budget what we paid her last year, or close, I would think that would be okay. Okay. And how about for you guys? Have you thought about what your no, budget I'll talk needs to now. I mean, Eric had said to try to stay four hours or under, and that's what I've been trying to do since I stopped <laughs> it. But there's, okay. <laughs> there's a lot, and I think part of it's a learning curve. Yeah. Once we know what we're doing, and we get faster at what we're doing, it's going to be a lot less hours. Yeah. Like I'm retired. <laughs> I want to be a lot less hours, but I want to help. Yeah. So. So you think the the reappraisal will be twenty five, twenty six? Do I think so? I have Yearly. Not. What year are you going to do that? Oh, the, you mean for the whole town? He's saying it's going to be like uh, uh, the year twenty five, twenty six, and that's because they're well, saying it's going to take um, the state Vermont taxes. Okay. Yeah, he's the one. That, he's free when we work with him, so we try to work with him well, as much as we can. Property tax evaluation. This is this is statewide review. evaluation. Right, right. Yeah. I understand. But that. talking to the other um, towns and listers, because we, I had never did that on request for poll, so I kind of reached out to them. Uh, they said that uh, get it in now. Yes. So there's limited there are limited people who can do that work. Well, problem. that's it. So. He said if you if you wait until you're close to 25, then you're you're going to get the bottom of the barrel. Oh, so you're going to put put in a request request for, request for quote. I've already actually got it down. I just got to review okay. it. But that would be okay. for our budget. So we're, no, yeah. not our that budget. That would be like but, next year. But it's good to yeah. it's yeah. good to know what we're yeah. what we're looking at. But there's going to be no no big software bill that. Not that, according to what he's that saying. That, that was, okay. That's the Vermont Pie, and that's kind of well, slowly news. taking over everything. It started this year with the sales validation, but sooner or later, but it will still interface with CAMA. And unfortunately, our CAMA is through Microsoft, which is on my Nemeric. So we definitely have we've got to keep in mind that if we use somebody else to do this, the statewide one, is that we have to have something that will work well with the CAMA that we have. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of manual input. Yeah. But Just update it. Pardon, I'm a little ignorant on this, but why wouldn't we do that for next year, that reappraisal, instead of waiting in two years? Well, I've got my folk to, to go out and so we, that we get a the due date for all the proposals which March 1st. So I want it in before we do next year, the, the budget for next year. That makes sense? But he's saying, why don't we do the, you're saying, why don't we just why we why don't we physically, do the physically do the appraisal? Do the appraisals? And get ahead of the curve. Right. Get ahead of the curve. Is that because of the, we have to wait for some number from the state or something like that? That, that I don't know. I can find out. Okay. I can, Thanks. I yeah, can part of the process. The, they, they, so have to, they have to do a lot of work on their end before well, they they're can do Well, they're saying it's already way out. Like these proposals, they said if you get somebody, they're, they're like way out right now. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to get it in so that I know that we can get somebody that oh, kind of knows what they're doing or good at it. And the other thing I think is, and you know, who knows, we don't know. But the real estate market's been so crazy the last few years. I think waiting a little span of time and hoping that things settle out a little bit before we do our reappraisal would probably be a good thing. I think but so. Who knows? All the yeah. houses that have sold are like up here right now. So right. if they reappraise all the ones around it, we're going to all be in community centers. <laughs> right. You know? Right. So. Okay. Yeah. okay, so when do we. Um, 
when do we need to pull the trigger on this network decision? It's, it's effective next July, right? So we have plenty of time. Right. Yeah. But I certainly think, I mean, I think that's the way we were all we were all leaning anyway, I believe. So yeah. They did a nice job last year. Yeah. yeah they did very good. And like I said, and, and Shelly helps when we need the help. And I kind of put that in there just to make sure that she's not here 24 seven. We can just, we can call her when we want to have her do something for us. Yeah. Okay. So am I am I understanding it correctly that the two columns that you have here, the member column and then the municipality general services? Right. If, well, if you look at it, what she what she did is sent me the one that they signed last year, and then she sent sent me a blank one that would let me update. So I've kind of highlighted and put in the X's, and uh, the ones where I put in the X's on both, I said as needed by listers, because a lot of some of it we might have never done before. So I want to make sure that we're doing things correctly. But some of it, she just might want to oversee or, or answer questions as we do it. And that, that's where I was going with that. Right. Was, uh, some of them are going to be kind of like uh, working together. Right. Whether it's bringing you guys up to speed or just providing some oversight. Yes. And that's, and that's the, what we did last year. Okay. Yeah. So we need to... So are you, so you're recommending that, so is this your meeting for the budget or are you going to come again, like with an actual formal? Well, you can tell why I wanted you guys at least see what, okay, what I'm thinking that we should do and then you guys let me know what you think. And we'll run the numbers and find out how much we spent last year and. And then I can, I, I do, I've got to get back to a number yeah. and I told her I would, but I said I wanted to All right. pitch it to you guys first. Okay. Are there are there any? Um, I know we touched on the software and the the large cost that 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 we were looking at for that has kind of gone away, so to speak. Are there any other items um, that you can forecast that might be, you know, large ticket items? And the reason that I ask is the uh, the capital improvement plan that the um, that the town's implementing this year, uh, that the budget committee is working on, and just wondering if there's anything that, um, as you start thinking about your budget and whatnot, just make sure you keep that in mind if you can't think of anything today. Okay. Um, I know that with um, the state saying that we should stay with Nemrick, it was because that we have part of their software. And it would cost more to have somebody else that has a different camera system that won't interface. And that's why I said, at least for now, we should use them and continue to use them if they're affordable. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? Okay. All right. Thank you well, very much. Well, you guys let me know and we'll put it on another select board meeting whether or not yes. we go forward with it. All right. Yeah, the budget process. And we're signing the, we're signing the paperwork right now. All right. Thank okay. you, guys. Thanks, Shelly. Thank, Thank you. Hey, uh, may I say something? Sure. Yes. yes. Yeah, you've got the errors and omissions up there on your desk, right? The We're right signing there. it right now, Sarah. Okay, good. Just sign them. Thank you. Say, uh, fire chief. Right time. Well, I don't want to be an alarm. Do you smell smoke? Do you smell <laughs> smoke? No. Is there a window open here or something? I don't smell smoke. Oh, the wind blows through this building like. <laughs> I don't smell smoke. Windows don't have to be open for her. <laughs> I do. And I'm pretty damn good. Maybe oh, well, somebody's got their wood stuff going, probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sarah's downstairs to learn how to fire. And we have a fire chief right here in Salem. There's something different. We have a fire chief. Moving on to roads? Yes, highway department. Updates on road maintenance. Okay. All right. So, center road is started. I don't know if you saw that or not. Yep. Today, finally. <clears throat> um, the new truck, I emailed them yesterday. They got back. They should be here either the end of the week or beginning of next week. And let's see. Um, oh, we're making road gravel in the pit with the millings that we cut from Center Road. And, yep. the, and the tailings from our winter sand. And we're at roughly about 1,600 yards right now. We probably get another day's worth of work, and it will be done. So I figure probably around 2,000 yards. We can put that to good use. One day you got 700, I heard through the rumor mill. 
That bill, those bills haven't gone in, have they? No. Okay. Yeah, so that was saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You had a question? Yeah. Make sure. No, I think our best day was 450 something. Okay. It was yesterday, it was 120 buckets. Are they coming back tomorrow to bathe? Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what they're, how they're going to do it? Are they going to pull McCullough Hill out and then hook, then when they hit it, when they go by? I don't know, I don't know the technique that they're going, I'm not sure how they're going to blend that all in, but I know they have to do a shim coat on McCullough Hill and Center Road. Can we ha have them fill in those holes before they shoot? I would imagine they will, but I will be around tomorrow to make sure that happens. Right. Total confidence in you. Thank you. They should fill them. Right. <laughs> That's what, yeah. yeah. Yes. And they're going to um, pave all the way over to the end of uh, Old Brook and McCullough. Right, they're going on the other side of the that bridge where they originally yeah. weren't. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because it's starting to break apart a little bit, so. Just be done. What? <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Uh, Did you ever find out about and I don't mean to put you on the spot, no. but I guess I am, but you're good at that. You're, yeah. Um, our policy on uh, social media? I did not. Do we have a policy on social media? Not that I'm aware of. I, think so. I didn't think there was, but I did see one. We've had a... We'll have to figure that out. We've had a challenge, a challenge on that. Maybe we should uh, look into that. Somebody put, like a, idea. A, a somebody, somebody put somebody put something. Somebody on. put something on, allegedly, allegedly, put something on Trump Ports forum that was uh, Facebook. demeaning or uh, demonizing. Uh, on Facebook, you mean? Or on Facebook? It was Front Porch forum. It was, fa it was Facebook. Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Yeah. Okay. But what might might be considered demonizing uh, another individual. Well, company. we probably should One have a social media policy. Yeah. Huh? So who who did the post? Was it one of our employees? Allegedly. I don't know how much I can say. So. That's probably yeah. We should probably. Right. Warn it for another meeting if we want to yeah. talk about that. There are plenty of companies out there that have social media policies that we can look yeah. at. Mm -hmm. Good. Good so. idea. It, it brings up the bigger question of a more in-depth review of our existing personnel policy as a whole, which I know right. we've talked about a couple different times, but um, highlights the need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once again, we never seem to be able to put that darn thing down for more than about a month at a time, <laughs> two months at a time. But anyway, that 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 point is well taken. I mean, the whole social media thing is. Uh, yeah. Well, you never used to have to deal with it, but I don't deal. I mean, Back I, in the old days. Yeah. Yeah. I don't use it anymore. So. I don't. Does this does this warrant further conversation in another meeting? This specific yes, incident. Yes, it does. I believe. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sarah, can you um, put something on the next agenda? Um, yep. I would say if it's an, an employee situation, it's, it's probably going to be an executive session. Yes. Um, can uh, so this was an employee? Just to be clear, this is an employee that put something so allegedly on Facebook. Uh, correct. Okay. Great. Thank you. Come on in. Come on in. Take a seat. Just this a meeting? Yes. It's a select board meeting, yes. Yeah. Oh, the pad, the pad. The pad. Yes. Uh, I started uh, putting stone down for a pad for the future salt shed. I'm, I'm sorry, for, for where? For the future salt shed. So, oh, yeah. So did we hear about that? I haven't heard. I put it in two days early. Um, I haven't heard back yet. Um, so we're anticipating that we're going to be getting something. Yeah. So we've we're smoothing out a spot, leveling it out, getting it prepared, so that this is that big expense. This is project. behind the town, behind the town garage, I presume. Yeah. yeah. So behind the gate. Yeah. And then we have to get the permit. 
Yeah. Before we start building. Yeah. We are our, not at a point where we're building. Yeah. It's just cleaning out and smoothing out. Are you tracking hours and all the equipment runtime and all that kind of stuff? Because I think if my memory serves me right, that can count towards our match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was a 20% match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds right. That's it. Okay. Anything else, anyone? That's exciting. The new truck is coming. It'll be good. It'll what be a good. relief. Now we can get on to something else. Yep. Until it breaks down. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we had, just just on the new truck. I know we had a discussion back when we were ordering the truck oh, about right. warranties and extended warranties and all that. And this is the time we need to deal with that because once we get that truck, yeah, I will, if we have it implemented. I think there was something done on the warranty, but I will double check it. Yeah, we entered into uh, a contract year. nine year, I believe. Was it nine? Nine okay. years. Good. Okay. Well, let's just make sure that. No, I'm pretty sure we already. That's it built into the price that we paid. Okay. 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 Good. Good. As it should be. Good. And the excavator's working okay? No major issues? The grader's working okay? No major Better be. <laughs> the, um, before we move on this, uh, the new employee, um, yeah. class, class is going well. Going great, he loves it. Yep. Um, the uh, timesheets that I looked at this week, it looked like he was Putting in more than his well, forty yeah, hours. Yes, we were. I talked to Drew about okay. that. Okay. Yeah, we were, we were utilizing him, but uh, we don't need to utilize him as much. Okay. That's that was a very awesome. ambitious person. He is. Great. Would you say it's ambitious? It's exciting to have somebody who's so yeah. excited to do work. Yeah. Yeah, I think my only concern, um, it, you know, as as we look at coming into the winter and, and you know being fairly new and understanding what we budgeted for overtime hours throughout the year and how much of that actually happens during the summertime versus the wintertime. Um, it was just something that popped into my head to make sure we're conscious of how much we're chewing up ahead of time, yeah. not knowing what the winter brings. Um, so anyway, that's what popped into my head when I was looking through stuff. Um. The, I was reading, uh, which is later on the agenda, um, that class four section. All, I read through that whole thing, and it got me to thinking about um, the request that I made um, a while back about having a sign put up on Culver Hill Road before the sharp turn after the Bretts. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was an arrow that we wanted. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah, that's all right. But the, And the reason I even thought more about it is because the the guy across the road from us redid the mailboxes and put in a steel post, which <laughs> I have friends gonna, when the person hits it, that mailbox isn't going anywhere. That car is gonna be like, I just think for, per, for the purposes of safety, because literally I would say we get three people off the road every winter coming down that corner because they're going too fast and they're off the road and haven't been on it. Speed bumps. Yeah, speed bumps <laughs> would be great, I know. But it's just they don't know the road, and so yeah. they just go off it and they wipe out the mailboxes. But this time, I don't think they will wipe out the mailboxes. So that slipped our mind. That's all right. I just I just well, looked at I'm, it. I'm glad you reminded me because we have a list of that kind of stuff we do, and it's pretty. Good. It's getting long. Well, yeah. Well, you know, cause stuff cause up. we don't have anything else to do. We can, you know, if we have some spare moment. Yeah. He has a. I actually carry a book with me, but it's right. so it's a big book. list. It sounded oh, like maybe I had to pay for the sign, though, if I was requesting it, or am I? Like, What's that? No, I like don't think I'm, you would have to pay for that. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of some other thing that you'd have to pay for for a sign. Maybe like oh, a street that was bare hill there. Like a private road. Oh, sign. okay, like a private road sign. Yeah. Okay. But this is an actual road sign. Yeah. This is a, yeah. This is a regular road sign. Yeah. So I have another question in that area. Is we know our speed signs are wrong, unenforceable, all that. Um, did we ever determine if we have to do a full-blown traffic study before we can correct that problem? Yes. I would imagine you'd have to. Because <coughs> I, 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 I know in the past we've dealt with it. Study, but a traffic study has to be done. I'm sorry, Sarah, I couldn't hear you. 
I said, I don't know what you mean by full-blown traffic study, but I know a traffic study has to be done. Well, that's, there's, there's, there's only one kind of traffic study that's going to pass the sniff test, and that's a real one. Uh, yeah. Victor and I could cruise around and do a traffic study, but I don't think it would be uh, it would be valid. Um, I mean, we need to put that in our in our plan somewhere where it is in terms of priority and how much it costs, and you know, it's nothing we can do, right? We have to hire an outside person to come and do the traffic study. Right? So I talked about it with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission a while ago, and it it, it does seem to be a kind of detailed process. So. It's not only that, but I mean, the, the, well, the ordinance doesn't even mention certain roads that are, that are correct. Can you hear me? Okay. The big thing is well, after we get it, how do we enforce the speed? Well, we either just throw our hands up in the air and say, we're not gonna enforce the speed at all, which is pretty much what we're doing now, or we have a plan to get back so we can- uh, The sheriff has been coming lately. According to the yeah, pay sheet. Well, how do you know, Randy? I've seen him a couple times, and we paid some bills for him. So <laughs> that's right. Uh, you know, there. Don't get me wrong. I think just having the sheriff in town tends to slow people down. But the fact of the matter is, you know, I think the word has gotten around that you can't. You know, they can't write tickets or they can't issue tickets. So. You know what's the point? They're just giving people warnings, I guess. Now it's it's my understanding that we're only out of compliance in certain areas, right? It's not the entire town. Correct. Correct. So like that section of Shady Rill down uh, to the main drag, we're out of compliance. Right. But you know, coming down McCullough Hill or or Center Road, you know, uh, I think that we're in compliance over there. Well, I don't know the answer to that because there were there were two issues. One that the signage was incorrect. But two, just that there weren't enough signs. Like, you know, there's supposed to be signs on both sides of every intersection. And all that well, wait a minute. State statute says on, a t on a, uh, the speed limit, statewide speed limit, is 50 miles an hour on a secondary road. So once they get over 50, why wouldn't you hit them anyway? And it's not like they don't get over 50. Certainly they get over 50 behind my house. I'm going to tell you that. But anyway, I just, I just want to make sure. I'm, we're not going to make any decision about this tonight, obviously. But somehow we need to make a plan and work our plan. I mean, if there are deficiencies that we can take care of in the meantime by, by putting up some more signs, we should be making a plan to put them up if we need to. If there are areas where we have to do a traffic study on specific areas, maybe that isn't too bad a thing to do. Like if it's Shady Rail and a couple of other places, Center Road maybe. Um, I, I just want to make sure it just doesn't disappear into yep. the fun. That'd be an Ashley Andrews question. I could send an email to her. Okay. Yeah, I, I would imagine it probably would be. If she couldn't, she would be. She, uh, she would know where It would be a start. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody? Okay, so this is when we're supposed to take our break for our Board of Civil Authority meeting. Right? There's your chair. Your chair is sitting, your BCA chair is sitting right next to you. I know. Hello and welcome. <laughs> we do have a guest. What is your name, sir? Dan Riley. Dan Riley is here. That's okay. Okay. He just has to sit through a BCA meeting. Right, I know, but if you have, don't you put people on the, or only when they speak? No, the BCA only meetings. Speak. Are... Yeah, no, I just mean she didn't know he walked into the Oh, meeting. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I ask you a question about this? I, I didn't yes. mean to interrupt, because I don't know your format, but you know, I'm just a member of the town, a landowner, and you know, I heard about this meeting through Mike Hill, one of my neighbors down there. I'm in that segment of the road. And so, you know, I just yeah. assume that there'd be a good segment of the public here, but there's nothing like that. And you have just introduced me as a guest, so I just don't understand that. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Go ahead. So, so what's going to happen, Dan, is at 6.45, it's warned on our agenda, so it'll be give or oh, take okay. a little bit. Yeah. That issue was going to come up. Okay. And, and some of your other neighbors are supposed to be here. Yeah. Other members of the public may or may not be here, but awesome. that's when we're going to talk about that. And some of them may be on the computer. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I was yes. just curious why it was so dead here, and I was oh. guessed. Okay. <laughs> no, we always we always welcome visitors. Yeah. <laughs> so stay I'm warm. It's a little chilly in here. That term because, uh, I just like to say, I don't know, use like it as a polite term. I would expect there'd be more members of the oh. town here than the board. 
We would oh. love we would love to see more people at Yeah, people. Yeah, generally. All right. So you get the honor of being a guest because yeah. you don't yeah. get many. Okay, so it's six p.m. We'll call the uh, board of civil authority meeting um, to order. Uh, are there any amendments? Okay. Um, so the first order on the agenda is approving processing of November eighth, twenty twenty-two. General election ballots on November 7th, 2022. Authorizing town clerk, Justice of the Peace, Dorinda Crowell, and Assistant Clerk Cheryl Granfield to open signature envelopes containing general election ballots and processing them through the tabulator in town hall on Monday, November 7th, 2022. Action likely. So moved. <coughs> Is there any discussion? It's been moved and second. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, moving? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it. Designating one JP to serve as official canvasser of votes. Reporting results to Washington County Elections Clerk Rosie LeCare in East Montpelier at 10 a.m. Thursday, gotta, November 10th, 2022. I got the wrong time. Rose, the, the time changed. Okay. What is that new it time, is, Sarah? It is now 10 a.m. On, on November 15th. Which on, is actually a Tuesday. On Tuesday, November 15th. Is there some discussion on who would like to be the JP to serve as the official canvasser of votes? Who reports at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, November 15th? So the reporting no longer involves going over there, right, Sarah? It's a phone no, call? No, it does. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay. Yes. COVID's, COVID's over, so yeah. Okay, all right. I could do that, probably. Okay. I can do that. Well, it's supposed to be a JP. A Justice of the Peace. Yeah. Oh, it can't be a member of the Board of Civil Authority? Okay. Well, I mean, it, ideally it should be a JP. Okay. Anybody's All right. Freak out or... Is there a JP that would like the honors of doing this very important work? We have... I don't have any of them here. Are, are you, who Chris. said that? Chris? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Are there any other nominations for this very honorable job? Can, can you tell me what the pension benefits are? <laughs> They're high, Chris. They're yeah. high. Okay. You get a cup, of, a cup of coffee on the third Thursday of every month. Is there a motion oh. to designate Done. Chris yeah, McVeigh? I'll move that Chris McVeigh be the, uh, the uh, official Designate. canvasser of votes on, Thurs on Tuesday, November 15th at 10 a.m. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor of Chris McVeigh, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Congratulations, Chris. Okay, now we have a big job coming up. Designating BCA members to the following assignments, which is election night. But it's really, oh, it's only 7 p.m. So you don't need anyone, Sarah, on call from 7 a.m.? Well, uh, Dorinda is going to be there, and Dorinda is um, a JP. I'm going to be there. I'm the election official and a member of the BCA. Uh, Cheryl is going to be there. She is an assistant clerk, um, an assistant elections official. If there's anyone else who would like to be around during the day, that would be great. Okay. So, but during the day, for since we're processing all the ballots on Monday, November seventh. All we're going to need are just would be just to uh, talk to people about if we get a controversial situation. But I don't think we're going to have. I think we statutorily we're in the clear. But I need people to go through the ballots on, on uh, on November eighth at night. Do exactly what you did in the past. Yeah. So who would like to do that? I am not in town, so I am unavailable to help. But it is fun. I want to say, if you've ever done it, it's a good time. You get to meet with your fellow BCA members and count votes. And you don't have to travel anywhere. Yeah, it's fun. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. OK, Chris. Thank, Chris. thank you, Chris. Yep. This is John. I'd be available for that Tuesday evening. Oh, thank you, John. How many, how many do you need, Sarah? Uh, well, it would be good to have so another pair. Four. Yeah, a good pair. I'm happy to do that. Okay, who said that? That was Theo. Theo, okay, and then Randy <laughs> raised his hand. Yeah, unless somebody else wants to. Randy, are you volunteering? Uh, not unless somebody else is. <laughs> so Randy's volunteering, that's good. Okay, okay great. Oh. 
Thank you, Randy. Don't um, so they just have to be here by 7 p.m., correct? Right. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, you're going to document the write-ins and look for any ballots that are funky where someone signed their name and we have to invalidate them. And so you've done it before. I've just been reminded. I apologize. I'm be in Boston that night. Oh, Theo. All right. What about Jan? She always likes to do it, but I don't think she's here. Who? Jan. Let's, let's, let's name her. <laughs> okay. And that starts at seven. Yep. Seven. Yep. Did we need to move? Did we need a motion for this or no? I don't think so. Okay. I just need. To, I just while everybody's here, just trying to get everybody to do it. Alrighty. So, um, unless there's anything else that comes on other under under other business, which isn't on the agenda, we are adjourning the meeting at 6.06. So I have 6.11. Yeah, 6.11. Yeah, that yeah, that OK, 6.11. Great, thank you. Thank you. OK, so we are uh, back on the record in the select board thank meeting. You. See you. Bye, thank you. Good night. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> And this is our quarter meeting, quarterly meeting with the Middlesex Planning Commission. Action possible. I'm not sure what the action would be, but uh, I'm sorry, I can't see who we- I think Sandy's here. Got yes. over there. Are you there, Sandy? Sandy is here. Yes, oh, sorry. Yes, I am here. Thanks. Um, a quick update. I know you all have a busy agenda. I think Theo's on the, here as well. He's on the Planning Commission. Um, the update, the one, you know, sort of big outstanding piece of business involves the zoning update, which is now in the uh, select board's hands, but hopefully that can get ready for a vote um, by town meeting. The select board needs to make any changes it would make and uh, approve it and put it on the ballot for town meeting day at this point. And if there are questions or concerns, the Planning Commission is available to come to a future select board meeting to answer them if that would be helpful. Um, and so yep. probably put that on as an agenda item for the select board review of the zoning regulations. Yep, and just remember that if you do make significant changes, I believe you have to hold another public hearing, right, Sandy? So we need to do it sooner rather than later. Yeah, I, I think that's correct. I mean, I don't. I, I'm not aware that anybody has any any concerns, but I think we need to bring it up in a meeting. People, I want to take one more one more chance to uh, read through it and make sure it is what I think it is, and I would encourage everybody else to do the same thing, and then we can say. Yep, we're good to go for town meeting or no, we have changes to make and we have to have another public hearing. Thank you, Sandy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, and the other things is the Planning Commission is now taking a look at what are some new projects that we could um, be working on and looking at what the next steps will be. If anyone on the select board or anyone else has any thoughts about things the Planning Commission could or should be working on, please let us know. Um, some things that rose to the top based on a recent um, at a recent meeting included taking a look at what, if any, regulation or, or planning there needs to be for retail cannabis in town. Um, taking a look at what some other towns are doing. Should should the town have, a, I guess it's called a cannabis control commission, similar to a, a liquor control commission or not? We, I think we'll take a look at that. Um, a second issue was. A combination of conservation and wildlife and outdoor recreation planning. A lot of our wilder areas are being used for outdoor recreation. There's trails. Um, are, are there things we can do to both facilitate that and, and manage that thoughtfully and um, help, help wildlife and conservation interests as well? Um, a third issue is, well, is um, implementing the walkable middle sex study, the scoping study that we completed. That'll be some work going forward with VTrans. Hopefully we can move that project um, along. And then finally, and I think this is more likely a longer term project, but an issue comes up on a number of times about water and sewer in the village that 
Um, if there's going to be more development in the village, I think something does need to happen either with water or with sewer or both. I know there's some look at, at as part of the development at the Colby property, there may be some water or sewer capacity available there and just um, keeping, keeping an eye on that and seeing if there's any additional work that would be helpful to do to foster that going forward. And I shared a, a, a short spreadsheet, which had some links if folks have any questions about the status of any other things that we're working on, happy to answer any questions or um, talk about it further. Anyone? As far as the sewers and the water go, Sandra, has ever, anybody ever contacted Brian Redmond? Yes. Okay. Um, he came to one of our meetings early on, I think when we were doing the town plan. Okay. And then I talked to him later when we were doing this, we talked to him later when we were doing the zoning. Right. Um, and he certainly encouraged, you know, there, there's, there are steps the town can take with drinking water and that's sort of his, his focus. Um, when I looked at what those steps were, it was probably more than our little volunteer uh, town can do. The state's also capable of doing some of that work, but um, yes, that, that's part of it. And he's a, he's a terrific resource. He's, I think, head of the um, drinking water section in, in the state of Vermont. He lives on the end of Knox Road. Yeah, right. And, and even the, the septic, the sewer, waste, oh, okay. wastewater. Yeah, I think that, you know, it's going to be something, and I know the town has looked at it before, but, you know, it's not something that needs to happen overnight, but probably right. over the next, you know, five to ten years. Right. The town's going to have to grapple with this one way or another, and it'd be good to get some of that study and investigation underway sooner rather than later. Okay. I was under the impression there was quite a lot of money out there available, but that was back a few months ago. Yeah. I, I recall when we when we did the uh, when we went through this the last time and came up with a proposal for a for a water system whenever that was five or six or ten years ago. Um, then we were told quite strongly that we didn't have a wastewater issue and we're likely not to have one. Um, I'm not sure that's still true. I'm sure the rules and regulations have all changed. So I think. Keeping our eye on that is important because that's going to be a a major. The water the water is is relatively simple. I'm not saying it's inexpensive, but assuming we have a water source, the water is relatively inexpensive. But the wastewater can be very expensive. Right here on the Penobscot River. Anything else, anyone? Okay, I think we're all set, Sandy. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Have a good evening. Welcome home. <laughs> uh, Dorinda, treasurer's report. Um, I don't have much. Um, I am looking for uh, approval on the um, the audit. Did you guys? I need to get back to Bonnie to. Have her finalize the draft that I sent everyone. Dang so does anybody? Care? I looked it over. It looked fine to me. I don't know. Uh, did you didn't see anything that was of any concern, right? No. no. I I didn't get a chance to look at it. It completely slipped my mind. Um, I didn't either. I mean, there's no urgency to that, right? Well, no, other than just to get them, get, get it done, and stuff yeah, like that. So, um, if you want to, we'll put it back on the agenda for two weeks. I apologize for that. Okay. That's, I totally spaced on that. Okay. Um, the other thing was um, we received an email from a company out of, I believe it was Burlington or someplace interested in actually South Burlington and they're interested in coming down and meeting with um, somebody about our IT and cybersecurity. Um, I don't know after our meeting with 
RB last week, if we or a couple weeks ago, if we want to just put this on the back burner for now, or I mean, it's that's a good that's a good question, um, and unfortunately, I had to I had to leave the meeting the last meeting before uh, before you guys discussed that, and I didn't see anything in the minutes that indicated you did discuss it. So maybe we we, we did we gave an update uh, to the rest of the board. Right, on no, the I meeting. saw I saw that, but um, I mean, no no decision was made about whether we were going to go forward with with looking for other options or or that, and we do have a little bit of time now, so maybe this is a good time to. To talk about that, um, I mean, I left that meeting with with Ruben. I don't know. However, I think we all left the meeting feeling better about things. I'm not saying perfect, um, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't go ahead with what we uh, what we plan to do. Uh, what we plan to do, and I don't think it hurts to uh, it hurts to meet with those people. I mean, if we're if we're going to if we're going to go through a process. We should identify it. I mean, we had a list of names. We should identify who we're going to talk to and not just talk to random people who come in to see us. Yeah. But, no, I, uh, I agree. Um, I think that there were there was a list of four yeah. uh, put forward before us. Uh, I don't know as if this uh, entity was on that list or not. I don't believe it was. Um, I think it would be a worthwhile exercise, if only that. Um, to talk with these folks and and get various opinions on, you know, where we sit today and and where we could potentially be uh, in the future. So I would I would support engaging in conversation with these folks. What I would what I would maybe suggest or just throw out to everybody is, um, we're about to go in the belly of the beast with elections and budgets and all that stuff, and maybe maybe start a process more towards the end of the year to start to start doing that. I don't think there's any urgency to do it now and line them up and decide who's going to meet with them. I don't think we need the whole board to meet with them, so we should decide who's going to meet with them. But uh, I guess I would respond to that request and say, yes, we are interested in talking to you. Um, we'll be back in touch with you towards the end of the year or something like that. That makes sense to everybody. Okay. Maybe um, once all of our budgeting stuff is done and out of the way or something. Maybe the first of the year yeah. after yeah. the holidays because yeah. we're going yeah. to be yeah. so bogged down. Yeah. And at the, same, at the same time, in the meantime, um, we should have uh, Ruben come to a select board meeting, which, yeah. we, which we talked about at our, uh, at our meeting with him. Yeah. So we don't want to lose track of that either. Um, and along the same lines, um, I believe... Uh, Phil specked out a laptop. He actually specked out a laptop and a server. And I guess the understanding is that RB looked at, um, they felt that the lap, not the laptop, the uh, workstation was fine, but they disagreed with what was. Um, specked out for the server and I noticed in the um, support ticket this week it said something about um, to let them know if we want them to spec something out and I don't know if if Bill had any conversation with them or not and I don't know if he actually ordered the workstation um, I didn't realize till he sent the email that he wasn't going to be here tonight yeah. But um, so that's something else we should follow up on. Um, and I don't know when he'll be back, but. There was a pretty big dis discrepancy in the, in the budget numbers that Phil had and what RB, what Ruben had uh, talked with us about in our meeting. Yeah. Um, I let the rest of the board know that we were talking with Ruben and you know, he kind of was thinking somewhere between 15 and $20,000 as a conservative estimate and I think Phil's number, if I remember correctly, was like half of that. So um, there's well, we just need to get to the bottom. There's of that. there's definitely you know a conversation that needs to happen around that and and uh, looking into what that cost actually is. Right. I agree, but but we're thinking and we're thinking the server is in next year's budget, right? So yeah. we need to. In our budget process, we need to get to the bottom of that and be able to plug in a 
plug in a good number. Yeah. And I think that uh, the number Ruben gave us was sort of a shoot from the hip kind of number. I don't Correct. think he'd done any real, no, nope. given it any real thought. So we need to get a real proposal from him and understand what that is, and also, uh, you know, whatever Phil's Phil's thoughts are and how it's going to work. I mean, the, again, again, I just want to be careful because we're tiptoeing into the dark waters. You know, is, is Ruben or one of these other tech companies going to be happy dealing with a server that? We've gone out and bought on our own. That's always an issue, I know. Yeah. So we need to be thinking about that also. So do you want me to contact RB and tell them to go ahead and spec out a server? Yes, I think we need to because we need to include so. it in. Yeah, we need to include it in our in our budget process. Okay. And at the same time, Durand, if you're going to do that, if you would. I mean, I would say not November, but December. Uh, let's get it on the radar so we meet with Ruben, so we don't forget. Or maybe January. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you and Sarah think is a good is a good time to do it. But I just want to make sure we do it. I, I think it's a good idea to loop him in through the budgeting uh, workshops that we do, because he'll have some input on not only looking at what we have spent this last year, but talking about what the future looks like in proposals. So I think I think including him in, in one of those workshop budgets, so probably not waiting until the end of the year. Okay. Yeah, you're probably, you're, yeah, that's, I could agree with that. Okay. So just a reminder, we only have four more meetings before the end of the, of the calendar year. Isn't that, that's what I'm saying, the weeks are just- Okay, yeah, uh, we're, we're there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it. <clears throat> Anything else, anybody? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, can I just ask something about the orders? Sure. Sure. Um, I'm just looking at the timesheets. Mm -hmm. And I don't quite understand Eric's timesheet here. Isn't it, just refresh my memory, because I think it was on this case, you have to work, physically work 40 hours. Except for holiday. You guys made the decision. Okay, holiday was included. That you would allow holiday time to, to be, be work, part. But not personal, not vacation. Not personal, not vacation. Okay, so it still is off by an hour, I'm not quite sure. It's off by one hour. It's yeah. off by, he had in one column nine hours and another column 10 hours and okay um the total so the red the is co correct not up here yeah and the totals the two totals match up the at total the 47. matched the total for the week but somehow a 10 got written in instead of a nine i guess oh I the totals know. came to 47 on that one time sheet you mean for the week yes yeah okay but the, we're looking at the red because then not not yeah. here. Okay. So the discrepancy is is in that Friday's um, entry. Yeah. There's a ten on the day, but in the total the sum is forty seven on both the week and on the. Um, so he should be in the front. That's the first week there. Okay. I just don't see anything but. Um, Fives and tens and eights to get a seven. Yeah, I so, don't understand where this so the ten, comes from, but this ten. So yeah. when he totaled it, it's forty-seven. That should be a nine to match here. Oh, oh, oh! I see. Okay, yeah, gotcha. All right, all right. That makes sense. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Anything else? Any? You're all set, Dorinda. I'm all set. Okay, so. Um, the other agenda item we have is warned for uh, for 645. So I would suggest we uh, go ahead with our other uh, other business items, and because uh, you're expecting other people here, correct? No, no. I think at least one other family may join by Zoom. So we should wait. Oh, okay, but we should wait. Yeah. Yes, we should wait. It's 645. Yeah. Wait, I'm this is correct. Yes, yeah, 630 now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Liz, this would be okay, a great time, a time to put right, you right on the spot to uh, Alrighty. talk um, about the... So um, you have in front of you, Sarah printed out, thank you for doing that, Sarah, 
um, five proposals that came in for um, our RFP for um, the review of the town hall. Um, so as a lay person doing this, I'm doing it with Sandy and um, Dave Megida. Um, as a lay person, it's it's hard to understand what you're looking at, right? You, it's it's really hard to compare apples to apples when we're looking at this. So I have to again give kudos to Dave Megida, who's very helpful in in parceling out uh, parsing out like what um, what we should be looking for, like sort of key elements to this. So I, I guess my 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 first sort of comment is that um, this is. I don't expect you guys to come back and say we recommend this because this is not necessarily your expertise at all. But we want you to obviously have a chance to, to look at this. So we spent a couple of hours um, last night um, going over these um, and we have determined that two out of these five have sort of risen to the, the top. Um, and what we would like to do next, and in the interest of time, we'd like to do this very soon, is to sort of give a heads up to the three that we don't think have risen to the top, to let them know that, um, that two have advanced, um, and that you know, the select board's looking at it, so, it's, so we're not you know, saying you're out of the running, but we as the committee of the review committee um, have determined two that have risen to the top. Um, and then on November 1st, so this will have to be on the agenda, Sarah, for November 1st, um, we'd like to make a recommendation. We, we believe we'll probably be able to narrow it down to one. Um, but we want to meet with those two because we have some questions that we want to um, ask them uh, before we make a final decision. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons that makes this hard to parcel out is because they have base prices and then they have add-ons. And it's hard to know, well, do you need this add-on? Is that add-on included in someone else's base price? Um, so, um, but what we've, what we've discovered is that the prices range from fifteen to 35000 and where we're looking at is a ballpark of around 25000 um, and um, so, so basically, now I'm not asking you, you know, to really make any decisions. I mean, for for us, except that we would like to go, um, we would like to um, go forward and meet with those two as a as a committee. Um, meet with those two separately. Those those two that have risen to the top. Um, and if you're feeling so inclined that you want to be involved in this process before November 1st, we'd probably have to have a special meeting with you. But if you would rather sort of trust us with this process um, and um, allow us to make a proposal on November 1st of one firm, um, that's going to be the best for this time frame because um, they need to know this is going to take a, you know this is going to take like three months for them to work on and they need to know sooner than later. So if we can have a decision on the first, an actual vote on the with, from the board on the first, that's what we're hoping for. Wow. So are you going to share with us who the top two are? Not, or not? right now. No. You want to wait yeah, until because the we end haven't. Of the process. Yeah, okay. We're not even. I mean, we just we haven't talked to the other firms, and so I just don't want to do that right okay. now on okay. the television. Okay. And you're not really looking for feedback from us. You're just giving us to us as well, information. no. We, you certainly can have. You you certainly can provide feedback. Um, if you're so inclined that you're looking at this and you say, well, gosh, like I think all five of these are great. I have no idea why they think only two would rise to the top. I want to have a meeting about this. We can. We can certainly warn a select board meeting, but it would have to be between now and uh, November 1st because we really would like to present to you um, our final decision on the 1st. Now, there could be a possibility that after talking to these two that we say, gosh, we're really having a hard time deciding. We want the select board to decide. Now, I will say what we may be also um, – presenting is um, 
a couple of scenarios because there's add-ons there can there there's a there are prices that we may be able to say to the board well we can spend 15,000 on just this but we recommend that we actually spend an extra 10,000 on this and this um, to get a more thorough um, uh, assessment of the building so um, so there may be an opportunity at that meeting for you guys to say well no I think we really just want to do like a bare bones thing and spend this amount of money versus the recommendation from us that may be or may not be because we haven't talked to these guys yet um, a, a higher amount but we're looking at around 25,000 um, maximum probably that we'd be looking at for I think I'd like to hear the top two after you talk with folks okay so maybe mm -hmm. once yep. you have those conversations you can circulate the top two candidates at this point and that gives me a chance I'd like to look at their mm -hmm. proposals at least and instead of digging through six maybe yeah. I can just dig through the two that yeah, they, they're they're not easy to read if you don't. I mean, and, and I and I speak from a complete layperson. I looked at these and I'm like, I immediately called Dave and I said, I need your help. Like, I cannot. I don't know how to compare. You know, civil engineering versus structural engineering versus this versus that. You know, there's so much stuff here, and what is you know what is it that we're looking for 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 this particular project, right? Um, and I don't expect anyone here unless they have that experience to be able to do. To do it really any much better than what I can do, or um, Sandy's a little better than I am at it. But um, but we're both sort of very much lay people looking at this using the guidance of Dave. But he was really helpful when we sat down with him for two hours. We got a much better understanding of what it was that we were looking for. Um, so. Um, so anyway, so um, I don't know though if I'm, I'm allowed sorry. to just email you guys. That sounds like I'm needing. Um, it's just I'm, sharing or information. Or is it just sharing information? So as long as there's no correspondence back okay. to you with communications around act actionable items. Mm -hmm. right. So your process is going to be you're only going to meet with the two or you're going to meet with the five of them? We're going to talk to all five of them, but, but we're only going to meet with two that we think have risen to the top. Based on, so there's a scoring rubric, um, and based on that scoring rubric, two have, you know, stood out to us and um, and so we want to talk to those two we're not going to talk to all five because we, we don't it's six so much it, looks like yeah, it six. takes so much time and six there's six I think there's five we didn't have six unless I've got who do you have there I've got Vermont integrated architecture yeah I've got SHKS architects yeah. um, Sanford and Strauss, yeah. Hunger Valley, yeah. Engineering Ventures, oh, Engineering and Ventures, and Black River Design. I think Engineering Ventures att is attached to someone. That's attached to VIA, I think. Okay. They, so they do. That's another computing thing. They have all these contractors that they work with that do <coughs> various things. So that's not a, that. That's not their own thing. That goes with one of the other ones. And let me see who that one goes with. Um, I'm it, sure it's probably says in it. Well, I realize I realize we're probably talking about a special meeting, but this is, yeah. I would like. I mean, this is this is a big deal for us. I, w I would like to be part of the discussion with mm -hmm. the two semifinalists. Okay. And I don't okay. know how the other board members feel. Do we want to make that a select board meeting? Yeah, I think we fine. do. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think we. Yeah, we don't. There. And and just so you know, too, they're going to want to the person who's chosen or the group who's chosen is going to want to meet with the select board anyway. Like that's just a part of their process sure. um, that's included because they need to know like what it is we really um, want. I'm trying to think of it. I think that's with BIA. Um, so, um, so we'd be looking at um, hopefully, you know, we're talking two weeks, right? Until November 1st. So yeah. like this yeah. week or next week, as long as I get the okay that you guys are okay with this, I don't think we need to vote on it because it wasn't warned, but just that we're gonna we're gonna um, invite two firms back to have a deeper question and answer with them, set up the meeting, and then you guys will know who those those two firms are. Um, and I'm, we're we're gonna uh, probably have um, 
they will set up those meetings. And probably, I would imagine, during the day, if that works for folks, more or less. Randy, you and I can probably find a time. Yeah. <laughs> Does that work for folks? Well, I'm just, I'm just concerned that we, we can't do it. I don't think it'll work to do it at the regular select board time because we just have no. too much on our plate. So this needs to be a special meeting special just, to, just to meet with these uh, yeah. folks. So, so, but we were pleased with the turnout. Yep. Um, that we had this many people. So, from a scheduling from a scheduling point of view, um, you're talking about holding a select board meeting during the day, or are you talking about meeting on the 25th, a week from today? Because that's the only uh, that's the last Tuesday before November 1st, which is the meeting where you're going to vote on this. I think Liz was suggesting doing it during the business day. I'm figuring during the business day because these are business people. They're probably not going to want to do it. They would, I'm sure, yeah. but I think everyone would probably rather have it. Well, it, you know, Liz, you can just keep me in touch if there, if we can get a poll from the board about which day is better for you guys than uh, something else, then we can work on maybe. So it's basically Randy and Liz who have real day jobs, right? So. Um, You're the ones who. I don't I mean, know. The rest that. of us, assuming <laughs> assuming I'm around, I'm which not, I'm not so sure that I agree with you on that. <laughs> agree with what? I, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> oh, Deja. Um, okay, so I'll just get in touch with Dave. I don't know if Sandy's listening. Sandy, did you have anything to add? She keeps it. Uh, up. No, I have yeah. nothing to add. Thanks, Liz. Yeah. That was um, that was helpful. I mean, maybe you think about scheduling it for next Tuesday, and if the other get about your regular meeting time, and if neither of the two sort of finalists can come to that meeting, then you think about another time during the day that works. How how long before you'd have the uh, these two the word out for these two people that you're going to. Well, um, I think what I, we just want to give the courtesy of the three others to yeah. tell them first before we. So then you're going to email us who the two are? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you'll find out anyway because we'll be setting up a meeting and we'll say this is who we're going to be meeting with. So I'm, I'm still unclear about whether it's feasible to do it during the day or we need to do it in the evening. I Why don't we try for the five o'clock? And if they can do it, they probably can. I mean, I, I, these aren't at, this is an hours long meeting. We just have, you know, a couple of, and well, you know 25th. what? They're not going to be together. They're going to be back to back. They're not going to know who the other person is. This is on the 25th? Um, so what Sarah So said? they would be that's back what, to back. That's what she but was that's what we're thinking is the 25th. Is the 25th. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I can't, you know, I'll ask Dave, uh, Sandy, how long do you think we'd be meeting with, with each firm? I don't know. Half an hour at minimum, be, probably? I would guess a half hour or so. And I don't know about meeting back to back if you can do it privately or in an executive session or if you need to do this in an open meeting. I don't, I don't, well, are your lawyer's here. Maybe he knows. Huh. Well, I, I would think that it would fall under an executive session due to the fact that you're talking about, you know, okay. your negotiations okay. around. Uh, you know, future contracts, right? Uh, I, I think that's potentially true. I, I'm not, I just got on and I'm not familiar with the nature of the, the contracts or the work. So, um, but subject to that, it, it certainly sounds like something that could be dealt with in an in executive session. So, I feel like we're getting in the habit of having a lot of executive sessions. I, we can't, we can't meet with these two people and talk to them and not, and not. I mean, then we could go into executive session to make the decision. But suppose members of the public want to be involved. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying I don't think this should be an executive session. I think if any public member wants to to um, hear about this, I think it's fine. There's nothing secretive about this. It's just we have some questions about their proposals that. Um, we just want to get some clarity on. 
um, for the scope of work and the cost and you know comparing sort of the, the for our own selves comparing the two proposals and um, and so and then there's also apparently you know what um, Dave was saying is that you know there's room to negotiate um, you know a lower price with them if we end up wanting to go with them so those are some things that like I wouldn't really know how to do that but Dave could probably guide us on that too um, but um, so yeah I don't think it needs to be secret um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be warned unless there's three select board members there, which there probably will be. Um, well, I think we're talking about it being yeah. a select so board meeting, a, a special a meeting. meeting. Right. right. So I think it can be warned, and if the public wants to come, they can come, except what we can't do is have some, is, so no, you can't. It has to be executive session because you don't want the other firm to see a public meeting meeting and want to just join in on the meeting because we don't want them there wait have, if i can just jump in here so the, the secret part of this was the was the bid process everybody has submitted their bids and that's that's done you've you've got that that's the, no one knows what each other's bids were right so now you're just looking at the you're just looking you're just uh, talking to them about some qualitative questions so i can't see really why that would be an executive session you're expending taxpayers money on this and the bid process, the secretive part of the bid process is over. So really, if we, if we bid out for something like uh, any of the FEMA projects, the bids are a secret, but then we go through them in public in a public meeting and talk about which ones we're, which contractor we're gonna hire. I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm a little confused about what this process is. I mean, I, I would, I guess what I was envisioning is is that each each of these two would essentially make a presentation and then answer questions? Um, that's not well. No, I mean we 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 have their the the two that have risen to the top. We just have specific questions so that we can become more informed for a recommendation to you. But now what you're telling me, what I'm hearing you say is that well, no, we want to be a part of that. Like we want to have the conversation and ask questions too of these two firms. Um, and so that's a different, that becomes a meeting, whereas before it was just the, the committee, um, the review committee having some clarifying questions to the firms. Gotcha. So that's, so now that's, this exactly, is where, right? that's exactly where my confusion is coming in, is, 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 you know, I'm trying to decide if if I think it's appropriate or I would like to get involved in in digging into the minutia of these of these proposals. Um, I'm certainly interested in looking them over, but I guess, and I'm just trying to th think my way through it. I guess I'm happy to look it over, and if I have questions or concerns, I can I can let you know or let Dave McGee know, and and you guys you guys can address them. I'm not I don't want to make this pol this process more complicated than it needs to be. And I guess if, if I'm not gonna, gonna hear from them about their proposal, if all I'm gonna do is hear them answer questions that you guys have for them, um, yeah, they're not I don't think I need to be, I don't think, I, how do you feel about that, Randy? I don't think I need to be part of that as long as I can. I, I think for me, what I was interested in is, is being able to actually review in much more detail the two mm -hmm. recommended candidates that they would like to talk with and not have to dig through five um, right. and and develop any kind of questions, comments, concerns out of those two. Um, but are you comfortable are you comfortable giving that feedback to the committee and having them I have no answer issues questions? With that. Yeah, I think that's I, I'm I'm sorry yeah. Liz. I, I got off yeah. on the wrong uh, so on that the wrong makes path, because like, I'm with you. I, w I want to take the time to look through it, and if I have questions, I'd like to have my questions answered. But we don't need to go back to square one and have them talk about their proposal. Yeah, no, I would. I, I would say that is not where. Yeah, no. So, so if we were to, so basically, this in the next few days, Dave is going to reach out to the two, set up an appointment for Sandy, Dave, and me, to meet with them to ask questions. He's going to reach out to the three that didn't rise to the top and say, you know, you're, um, you didn't make it to the second round by our review committee. Um, and then, um, 
and then we can tell you who those two are so that you can look at that and then we'll have our questions and you guys if you want can I suppose uh, ask questions or we could, I mean this is where a special meeting came in if that you really said we really want us to have a little special meeting with like Dave Megida and our us as a select board before we go and make a recommendation to you we can do that before November 1st. Here's, here, here's what, I think, what I think makes sense, is um, give those of us who are interested in going through these a couple of days to go through them. Mm -hmm. um, assuming what we have is, is concerns or misunderstandings or feel like we need more information, I'm comfortable giving that to the committee and letting you guys mm -hmm. develop that. And then, and then get back to us. I don't feel like I need to meet with uh, them. I think that's going to cause confusion for them as well. Mm -hmm. Like they're dealing with a committee and all of a sudden members yeah. of the select board are showing up. I think that's a, yeah. that's a mistake as long as, as long as you're comfortable with that, Randy. Yeah, I just want a chance to review the two candidates that they're recommending and be able to, to ask questions to the committee that can then relay those to the, those yeah. folks. That's all I want. And yeah. I just want to make it clear, though, too, that um, at this very moment in time, you know, even if we tell you tomorrow who these two candidates are because he's communicated, Davis communicated with them, that doesn't mean that you can't look at the other three. Like, if you are so inclined to say, well, I just want to review the other three, you can because yeah. We're, we are not officially telling, like we don't, want, we don't want it to be that you guys never even looked at those other three, right? That's not fair to them. Um, and so- But I think the bottom line is, the, the bottom line is we need to trust the process. Yeah, yeah and, it's a matter and, of capacity. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I mean I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I'm not interested in going through three proposals that have already put on the sidebar. If all of a sudden I see some some major problem with one of the two you've selected, then we might want to reconsider that. But I mean, I'm I'm hoping that, you know, you'll you'll get agreement from us that that's mm -hmm. you're headed down the right yeah. path, and we just have a few questions or concerns we'd like to have addressed. So, we we will need to know who those people are when you can tell us, and when you are going to be meeting with them, so we can get back to you yeah. before you're going to meet with them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is everybody good with that? Are you good with that, Victor? I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Sounds good. good. Okay. Well, it is now um, a little past the time uh, for our uh, bear swamp bear swamp discussion. So, um, you all uh, received the uh, correspondence from uh, Mike, and he is here with us. Correct. And who do we have on the, I, I'm sorry, but where that computer screen is, I cannot even see the name. So who else have we got with we us? We have John Demeter, Sandy Levine, um, whoever John's iPad is, Paul's iPhone, and Jan Theron. And we've got one. Oh, is there more under there? Uh, Annette. Oh, Annette Pallas. Okay. Annette who? Pallas. I think she's the other lister. The other lister. Okay, so what I would what I would like to do is, uh, and you've all received it, I know, but but read into the record, uh, the the request from these folks, and we have uh, we have Mike's Mike's written thing, and then we have uh, signed uh, signatures. Uh, by the other abutting landowner. So I'm just quickly going to read this in and then we can start the discussion. Um, my home is located along the 0.3 mile class 4 portion of South Bear Swamp Road and I support the request to the select board that the town plow and better grade and periodically maintain the ditches along the 0.3 mile section that runs from the current turnaround just past 323 South Bear Swamp Road to the significant ledge in the road past the driveways for homes located at 399 401 406 Bear Swamp Road. If the town would do so without a formal upgrade to Class 3, we would be satisfied, similar to what was discussed in the context of upgrading a 0.4 mile section of McCullough Road in 2015. None of us seeks a significant expansion of the road nor grading better than the level done in 2021. If the work sought can be done, 
only by an upgrade to Class 3, as appears to have been the case at McCullough Hill Road, then we would like the Class 3 upgrade. I am signing below on behalf of everyone who lives at the addresses identified below for me. Thank you for your consideration. And that is signed by, excuse me, uh, Mike Hill, uh, Diane Chapin, Daniel Riley, who is here uh, with us in the room. John Lund. Got one more here. They just don't want to come apart. Mike Klein, probably. And Mike Klein, yes. Yes. Um, so with that, I guess we're, uh, we're ready to hear from you, Mike. Thanks. One thing I'd say is that uh, the language here wasn't just mine. This was, uh, reflects the input of all five people. So um, it's true that I was the lead author, but I okay. sat around. I, I had talked to everybody before I met with you September 6th. And so when I represented to you that this was, not only was there no opposition, unlike McCullough Hill, where there were three people at the meeting who spoke against it, there was no opposition within the class four or anybody else I've talked to. In fact, I've talked to other people on South Bear Swamp Road who have said, well, absolutely, of course. You know, we're taxpayers. We can't individually pay to improve our roads. We need ambulance service. We need services. And now we have a family. This year, after eight years, this is when I really decided to get more proactive about it. A family with three small children who couldn't get oil delivered. I pay about ten thousand dollars in taxes a year. I have for eight years. I can't get garbage picked up in my house. I mean, it, and when I moved here, there have been three or four changes since I was here last time and spoke. And I'm going to make sure you're all aware of them. I'm not going to talk about a couple of other changes because I don't want to because they create more heat than light. But I do want you to know that the changes since the last time we were here, and hopefully this is enough to get at least three votes. One is we have this petition. And Peter, I, I distributed this petition and asked my four neighbors, who I tried to keep out of this, to sign it only because Peter, during our call, said, well, if, you, if everybody else agrees with you, that's good enough for me. Peter was very clear that he could not speak for the board. But I figured if I had Peter's vote, that would be enough for me to circulate the petition. So we did. Second is the issue of precedent was important to you all. September 6th, and I respect that completely. I think we've answered that. McCullough Hill is the precedent. It, it, you, it came up very clearly. What do we do about McCullough Hill and precedent? And the board voted unanimously that 0.4 miles is not enough of a stretch to be considered precedent that we need to worry about. In fact, if there's precedent, it's McCullough Hill, and you have to stick with it. So, I mean, we could make differences. That's at 1,400 feet, we're at 1,500 feet. I don't, those are distractions. We have precedent, and I think you have to stick with it. I didn't want to get into McCullough Hill. I didn't want to get into East Bear Swamp Road. But I do want transparency. I want to understand the law. My home is my largest investment. And the, the, the third change, and this was a big issue September 6th, was Mike, you knew before you moved here that you were buying an unplowed road. That is. I said September 6th, well, maybe I was stupid, but I didn't know. So I went back September 6th, and I wasn't stupid. I looked at all the papers. Nobody told me this road was on cloud. Nobody told me the word class four. It's not required. I mean, you have to require disclosure as to mold and what elementary school there is and everything else, but you don't have to disclose. Nor does this town do anything to disclose it. There's a sign that says it's not a through road, but there's a sign on East Bear Swamp Road that says it's not a through road before it goes on for a half mile to plow and grade for one family. Well, all no through road means is that somewhere there's a dead end or there's a ledge or a barrier. I saw a perfectly well graded road, and it was a perfectly well graded road until this year. And I got into a little bit in the last meeting why I think that is. And clearly, people didn't want to hear it. And I don't want to go into it. But there's no doubt to me there's been a change this year. And it's not a good change. The third thing is, um, I guess there's, I've talked about three things. One is the petition. One is precedent. One is lack of notice. The fourth thing was I had a couple of very good conversations with Peter. And Peter said, look, let's diffuse this. The September 6th meeting wasn't good. And there were some things that were said there that just weren't true. 
and I don't want to go into them. If we can get the votes today without going into them, I'd like to do that. But Peter said, let's diffuse it. Very smart move. Let's have a meeting. Let's, you, Peter, and Vic, and Eric, you go out there and just look at it. I can't see how anybody here is going to vote against this without having gone, you know, had the opportunity to come see. I mean, right now, the road is washing down into my lawn. I mean, it's a trespass, frankly. And that's only this year. And it, there's a trout stream in front of my yard. I mean, it's, it's a foot deep and a foot wide, and it goes on for, I don't know, 60 feet, 80 feet? On McCullough Hill Road, it's smooth as a pancake. And, you know, I just it's not fair to the five people who live here and pay taxes to be treated this way. So um, that's, I can go into more, but I really hope I don't know. I would like to have a vote approving this. I think we had enough to get a vote before we had the September 6th meeting. Issues were raised September 6th, and we've answered them. We've got proof that all five people want it, and nobody's spoken against it. And this thing's been listed publicly twice. Unlike McCullough Hill, where three people were actively against it. We're not going to change the bucolic nature of this. I bought most of the right side of the road here, and I've put it in current use. I mean, and I've tried to reach out to the town, the head of the recreation committee, and say, look, if people want to hike on that, they can. But that person, Mitch Osaki, has never responded. And um, so we're trying to keep things in a way that's good for everybody in the town. This town has in its plan that it wants open space. It wants public access to recreation. When Mitch Osaki, because of what happened in Menashe, doesn't respond, that's objectionable to me as a taxpayer. And I think it's objectionable to the town, the people who voted for the town plan, who said that they want that stuff. They wanted, they didn't want Mitch Osaki to secretly say to Menashe, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you can break this property up into six parcels without any consideration of open space or public recreation or species impact or wetlands. You go ahead and as far as I know, well, nobody in the town, fix it. Mitch is not even a lawyer. He can't give opinions. And yet the lawyer, nobody, spoke up and said to Menashe, that's not true. So Menashe goes into the hearing, the only person who has said to him, look, you can't break up into more than three without doing that analysis. I gave Mr. Menashe a way to do that, to make it three, still give John Christian his land back to him. Everybody would win, the town would win, they'd get 200 acres, Mr. Minaj would make a 500% profit, a million dollars. But Minaj, what he heard was that this Flatlander Washington lawyer had come up and was the only person saying that the law was the law. And Mitch Osecki sat on the panel two months after giving him that secret written opinion and never told anybody. Two dozen people showed up as interested parties at that hearing and Mitch Osecki never disclosed yeah, I'm sitting on the panel, but by the way, I told him an answer. And he couldn't give him that answer in the hearing because all 24 people said two plus two equals four, not three. And four is a magic number. Four or more, you have to consider the town's interests, open space, public access to recreation, species impact. We're going to lose all those things if we continue to let go of the law. And Mitch Osecki let go of the law. And then we went to court. And the town had secret conversations with Howard Menashe and claimed privilege over them. That's suspicious. There's nobody who's been to a, a month of law school or has watched you know, court TV who thinks that you claim privilege over your conversations with your opponents. And yet that happened. I tried to meet with the town with the head of the Middlesex Conservation Commission during the proceedings, and we couldn't do it. Not unless we went ahead of time, lay out everything we wanted to say in a way that it could be shared with Menashe. That would have been an insane thing to do. So we did. I'm sorry I stuck up as I did, but I, I followed the law. These 400 acres around my house, I think they were taken from Howard and not from John Christian in a way that was grossly, unnecessarily harsh. To sell 400 acres and his family home on a Tuesday morning at auction to where whoever could show up with cash is going to lead to all of our properties, all of our wild spaces being chopped up into 18 pieces. Here, Menashe, 
threatened at the hearing, look, we only want four, we could ask for 18. Mike, I'm, I'm just going to interrupt you for a minute. Okay. We're not here tonight to talk about the yeah, what's that Menage business. What we're here to talk about tonight is, is uh, your, your written request to us. So I I, I, you've you given us a lot of background about, about other issues that we're really not concerned about tonight. So if we could, if we could focus, on, focus on your request, I think the board would, uh, I, I appreciate that. would appreciate that. If I didn't that. see one as directly connected to the other, I wouldn't have gone into this. And I don't, I, as I said to you, I didn't want to go into that. Okay. Well, let's, 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 let's say for tonight that that's going to be a sidebar issue. I mean, it, it is beyond the scope of the meeting tonight for sure. Okay. Well, maybe. so let, let, let me just okay. let me just talk for a minute. So okay. um, I've carefully I've carefully read your request and there there's sort of two things going on here that make a big difference in this. And I have carefully read again our uh, our highway ordinance, um, which we are in the throes of revising, by the way, but it is it is what it is as of right now. And in this, in this request, there are basically two issues. One is maintenance of a class four road in Middlesex. And uh, that I think is a fairly easy for one, with, one for us. We have obligations in terms of maintaining class four roads. And, you know, we can relatively, I'm not saying we can, we can make it perfect and that it's always going to be perfect, but I think, and I'm interested to hear what, what uh, Victor and Eric have to say, but I think we can potentially restore that road back to the way uh, it was when it was in better condition. And it is substantially washed out down on the side there, down the ledge and all of that. But, but, and here's the big but, to plow the road in the wintertime, which you also seem to be asking for, um, that means it has to be a class three road, which means it has to go through the upgrade process. Um, and, you know, you're, you're asking the town to do this, um, and I can't, I can't say for the board that we're, we're unwilling to do it, but that, that's a big, a big hurdle, I think, for us. So, you know, I know you think you, you, you somehow have it in your head that we, we did this at McKellar Hill Road, even though, the, even though the neighbors objected, and that means that we need to do it for you. I, res I respectfully disagree with you on that. I mean, that was a totally different process and totally different reasoning. Our practice and our policy has been, and it's spelled out, in detail in our in our highway policy, it has been pointed out to me uh, through our town attorney that, uh, and he is here. I believe he's still there. Right, yeah. right there. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, that our our highway policy that really what governs this process is is the state statutes, which supersede our highway policy. So. You know, we're we're looking at the state statutes. We're we're trying to understand them. At the same time, we're looking at our our highway policy. But what our highway policy says is that if a group of people, whoever you and your neighbors, want to make that a class three road, which means it's going to be plowed in the winter and maintained to class three standards, it's your obligation to bring it up to class three standards, not our obligation. And all I'm doing is reading exactly what's here. I'm not, I'm not making that up. And uh, the only other way to do it, I guess, and, and help me out here if somebody knows better, is if you can get a petition of 5% of the voters in the town to upgrade the road, then we're forced to uh, take it up as an issue. To consider it. At town meeting you're talking to, Peter? Yes. 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 It would be warned as a it would be warned as an article at town meeting. That's helpful. I, I did not see there. I, I saw the five percent as merely another, as not getting us any further than what we're doing right now, which is the board considering it. That's the way I read the law. Uh, but but if it'll get us further than that, we'll do the five percent. I didn't, as I said, it's September six. I didn't see any reason to bother five percent of the town well, the, because the, the, all the, it does is get you to consider. But the problem is. We're trying to follow our policy. 
a written past policy. And what is it in the policy that prevents you from saying yes here? Because you said state statute trumps the town ordinance. Right. State and I am not I'm not statute. I am not an expert on the state statutes and we well, will your certainly your lawyer is here and your lawyer has told you Okay. This, so let him speak. All right. He's yes, the one please. Let's hear from him. He's one of the Let's hear Good from evening, him. everyone. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. I can't hear him. That's somebody else speaking. Hold on. I got him. You got him, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, uh, anyway, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, just to clarify, uh, it, is, it is true that the the issues of maintaining highways, repairing highways, reclassifying them, upgrading them, downgrading them, discontinuing them, all that kind of stuff. That's pretty much a, a question uh, that is governed by Vermont statutes, but there are some holes in the statutes. And as a result of that, many towns adopt what Middlesex has adopted, which is uh, their own highway ordinance or their own highway policy. The, uh, what I have indicated is that where, where we have provisions in a town highway policy that are not consistent with state statute, then the policy has to yield to the statute. Um, here, we I think Peter referenced a portion of the, of the town's uh, ordinance, which basically sets forth the public policy in Middlesex, at least as of now, which is that for class four roads, the town does not perform substantial maintenance or ongoing regular maintenance and plowing. Um, under the statute, the standard is that the town uh, has the discretion to supply whatever level of maintenance to a class four highway. Um, that it deems in the public good. Um, and I think the buzzwords are public good and necessity. So in a way, we can say that those two provisions may be inconsistent, but in another way, we can say they're, they're actually quite consistent because the, the public good and convenience of the town, uh, as the public good requires, it can be said to be reflected in the ordinance provision that says, we're not going to, you know, it's in the public good not to spend town resources on regular maintenance on class four highways. So that's one way to look at it. With respect to <clears throat> a request that has come before the select board, I think that that's what we have right now. It's simply a request uh, by uh, five different property owners, if I'm counting it right, to do some uh, specific maintenance work, which is, I guess, some grading, and also to do some work on a regular basis, which involves plowing of the road. So that's a matter for the select board's discretion. Um, there has been no request that I can see for a uh, an upgrade to class three, other than through sort of uh, a secondary request in this written document that was presented to the board and as part of what we're discussing this evening. And so under the statutes, uh, the way in which you get a reclassification uh, proceeding going is there's only two ways. One is if the, uh, if a petition is, is forwarded to the select board that has that minimum of 5% of the voters, which we've already talked about. That's one way to get the matter before the select board. And just, just for clarification, it doesn't go before the voters. It goes before the select board at a hearing. It's not a town vote or anything like that. Um, the second way to get a reclassification or upgrade request like this in front of the select board is the select board can decide on its own motion that it wants to entertain that proceeding. Then it goes forward and it's either, in either of those two events, it will schedule a hearing. And it's a it's basically an evidentiary hearing before the select board 
which requires the board members to go out, take a look at the road, do an inspection, come back, take whatever evidence from interested parties they want to hear from, and then decide whether under that same standard, the public good and necessity and convenience of the town, whether under that standard, the, uh, the select board wishes to, uh, to reclassify whatever portion of the road we're talking about. In this case, it would be an upgrade from class four to class three. Uh, in doing so, it ha the select board has the right, but not the obligation. Uh, the select board can require the petitioning parties uh, or the requesting parties to first upgrade the road to class three standards at the property owner's expense prior to entertaining a reclassification uh, designation. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, and I, I hope I've answered at least most of the questions that have been bandied about here, but I'm happy to answer any further ones or to clarify what I've already said. Thanks. I'm sorry, we reacted. John's iPad, I don't know the name of the person, but there's a question on okay, the- Okay, so that's hand right? Yeah. Uh, who, is, who is John's iPad? I'm sorry. Yes, hi, uh, this is Sarah Lund, sorry. <clears throat> I'm um, doing this this way because I have a little cold, so I'm not there in person. Um, but I just have a, re uh, a question regarding um, us paying the expense to upgrade the road. Um, so I know that uh, we, my husband, and I, John um, Lund, and I live at 406 South Bear Swamp. So we are part of that petition that you're talking about in that portion of the road. And we had looked into um, making some... Um, modifications to the road um, previously when we first purchased our property. Um, and I know it says on the website, um, I'm double checking, um, that we have to have permission um, in order to make adjustments to the road. So how exactly does that play into what you guys are talking about with us um, doing the upgrade? What would we need to do to obtain that permission to make adjustments to um, upgraded to class three. Victor, you want to take that? I think you'd have to be more, you'd have to be specific in what you wanted to do. Okay. An upgrade could be anything. Okay. I'm just thinking um, in the sense of how you, you guys keep referencing that we would pay to upgrade it to a class three. So what um, permissions, what would we need to do in order to get permission to do that then is, is my my question. So I, I think what you're talking about potentially is two different things. Right. Help, help me out here, Victor, if I've got this right. wrong. But if, if, uh, if a resident on a class four road comes to the town and says, um, you know, we'd like to improve the road by putting down some gravel and doing some ditching um, to, make the road, to make the road a better road, um, and that has happened quite a few times over the years that I can remember, Typically, uh, the road commissioner and the road foreman go out and, and meet with the landowner and agree on what the scope of work is and say, yes, we give you permission to do that or we will allow you to do it, but you have to do this and this and that and the other. Um, but it's still a class four road. Okay. It's still a class four road. If you come, if you come to the town and say, you know, and, and this is where we get back to the snow plowing issue that we want to have the road maintained and passable year round by the town. That's a class three road. So then, then the process would be that you have to bring the road up to class three standards, which is a certain width, a certain slope. I don't it's have in there. It's in yeah, there. It's, it's in the it's in the town highway policy. Um, right. But, but um, it's, it's two different things, and, th and that's what I'm trying to get at. I think, the, I think figuring out how to, how to do some maintenance to the Class 4 road and make it better and make it passable and take care of the watching and improve the ditching, I mean, you know, it can't be our highest priority, but certainly our intent is to do that, especially on Class 4 roads where people live. I mean, we want people to be able to get back and forth to their to their houses and have the road be as, as safe as it could reasonably uh, be. And I also believe by law, and help me out on this, Victor, 
we are responsible for the maintenance of culverts on class four roads, are we not? So if there's a culvert that if there's a yes. culvert that washes out or collapses or or whatever it is, um, that's automatically that's automatically our responsibility. But not if it's your driveway. Not if it's a private. Not if it's at the driveway culvert. Correct. Correct. It's only like across the road culvert. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure what when you guys kept speaking of uh, of the residents. Um, taking the standard up to a class three road, if there were other permissions we would need to go through in order to make that happen because of how the website read. But well, it's a, it's, it's a process and the process is outlined and, and we, can, we can send you, if you don't already have it, the, uh, the road policy. Um, but it's a process and there's a public hearing involved and there's, you know, yes, it's a process. Can I ask a clarifying question? I'm still confused about the difference between what he is presenting with five people signing and asking us to either just act like it's a class three but not actually upgrade it, so but you know, to maintain it. Um, or if we can't do that, they'd like a class three upgrade. What is the difference between that and the five percent of the of the voters? What 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 happens if there's five percent? that changes this? I guess I'm asking our lawyer. I, I can answer that. The, the difference is that if 5% of the voters present a petition to the select board formally requesting that this portion of South Bear Swamp Road be reclassified from a class four highway to a class three highway, that takes away the discretion of the select board as to whether or not it wants to grant this particular request or not. It, it forces the select board's hand, if you will, and it requires the setting of a hearing to take evidence on the issue. It doesn't require the select board to simply reclassify the highway as, as class three simply because there's a petition received, but it does require the select board to set a hearing to visit the premises, take a look at the road, uh, do that inspection and then come back, have a hearing, and after hearing the evidence and based on that evidence, make a decision as to whether or not this portion of the road should be reclassified to a class three. At the present time, you don't have a 5% petition. You merely have a request from five uh, landowners within the town, five residents, who are making a request which at this point it's it's basically an informal request and it's it's addressed to the discretion of the select board as to what they want to do about it so but if we then my question is if it gets to that level of the five percent plus the public hearing is there a vote by the public on that like and then it's our response no there is not there is not a vote by the public it's strictly an event it's a it's a what we call a quasi judicial hearing before the select board the select board acts as the the judge of the proceedings they take the evidence they uh, they hear from the petitioners they hear from any other interested parties there has to be notice of the hearing much like there would be notice for a zoning hearing for a permit uh, for a uh, you know, a board of civil authority hearing, any kind of quasi judicial hearing, it would be similar to that. And the, the decision of the select board could be appealed to the superior court in the same manner as say a, a zoning permit decision by the development review board, subdivision decision by the planning commission, although I guess we don't do that anymore in Middlesex, those kinds of things. But it doesn't go before the 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 town for a vote or anything like that i just have one more question so then if we this came all the way to a hearing and we decided yes we're going to upgrade this to a class three road is that now our financial responsibility to make it a class three or is that still the responsibility of these people who wanted to have it upgraded i believe that under the statute and also under our, our uh, road ordinance or policy, um, the, the granting of a, an upgrade to class three can be conditioned upon the petitioners 
being required to foot the bill for bringing the road up to class three standards before the select board takes it over as a class three. At that point, once the reclassification occurs, the town would treat that portion of the highway just like any other class three highway and you'd, you would expend the town's funds to, to pave it, maintain it, ditch it, whatever you, you know, whatever you do with your class three roads. So, Thank you. so I have another question just to be absolutely clear about the process. If, if a petition is presented and we have, and we have a public hearing, could the select board not then make the decision to put it on the town meeting ballot and say, you know, we've, we, it's been requested that we upgrade, that we upgrade this road, um, and we're going to put it before the voters or is it still that the petitioners have to pay for it? And all we're saying is, if you upgrade it to class three standards, we'll maintain it. Um, the real, there's no process within the statute. There's no provision that, that mentions any kind of involvement by way of a town meeting, Peter. It's, it's, again, it's, it's an evidentiary hearing before the select board. I think that if, if at any time the select board decided upon presentation of a petition that it wanted to put the matter before the voters, that would merely be an advisory opinion by the voters. And I, if I was asked, I would caution against it only because you, the select board needs to make a, and, and admittedly, it's a subjective kind of amorphous kind of determination as to what the overall public good requires in a situation like this. And I could see where you would be tempted to want to get a, a vote of the town, the entire town, to, to better gauge what the public you know thinks what the voters think the public good requires but i think that potentially could run afoul of the statutory process itself which basically confines the inquiry to a to an evidentiary hearing before the select board you have a question Mike? yeah I, okay. thank you um a few things one <clears throat> um to be clear there has been a request just as much as there was in, at McCullough, where it was an informal petition by one individual, wasn't 5%, and there has been a formal request by five people, and we were told that if all five wanted it, we'd have at least one vote, but we made that request in writing, despite the fact that I didn't want to involve my four neighbors for reasons I've talked about. And what the statute says is, at that point, it is completely within your discretion as the board to upgrade what we've asked for, which is if the only way for us to get this plowing and this limited improvement is through class three, then we are asking now for class three. I had not heard the distinction, and thank you, Rob, that there might be some difference between you don't have to have an evidentiary hearing, and Rob apparently believes you can't have an evidentiary hearing unless 5% of the town weighs in. You, you are free to vote yes tonight. I don't think Rob would disagree with that. Mike, but that's, I just want to clarify, that's not what I said. What I said is that without the 5% petition, it's up to the select board, as you just indicated, Mike, that the select board has the discretion as to whether or not, whether or not it wants to entertain having a reclassification hearing, a formal hearing, based solely on an informal request. As I indicated earlier, the select board can act to do that even without a request from anyone. It could be that the select board at some point says, you know, there's a portion of a, of a class four road in town that's seen a lot of development and we need to make sure that that road's in great shape and we are gonna take it upon ourselves to schedule a hearing on our own motion to reclassify a current section of class four and make a class three. They can also do the reverse at their own discretion, make a portion of class three, class four. What I'm saying is, they can, they can decide tonight, based on this informal request from you and your neighbors, to schedule that formal hearing. It's up to them. What is not up to them is once there's a 5% statutory petition filed, they no longer have the discretion as to whether to say, oh, should we have a hearing or not? They have to have a hearing at that point. Right, right. now, they, they have the discretion to either accept the request that's in your in your piece of paper 
to deny that request or to or to do a third thing, do something else in between. So I hope that's clear. Okay, I don't think I've said tonight anything to the contrary of that. All I'm trying to say, Rob, is that you have the discretion tonight to say, yes, thumbs up. We're gonna treat the five people on this 0.3 mile section the same as we treat the one person on the 0.5 mile section of East Bear Swamp Road, and the same as we treat the people along the 0.4 mile section. We're gonna improve it. You don't have to make us pay. You have that ability tonight. No one is trying to force your hand. We think three of you will recognize that this is simply the right thing to do. I frankly think five of you will. But, and nobody is preventing you from doing this tonight. And if we do do it tonight, you know, we can just avoid further discussion, I would like to. The other thing is, we don't have to get 5%. We don't have to have an evidentiary hearing None of that is a prerequisite to um, court action. Um, simply doing something against one person for actions that don't seem legitimate, that in itself is enough for court action under Rhodes versus Georgia. And nobody wants to go there. We simply want the right thing to be done here because it's deserved here. There are five families here. And this is not increased development, Rob. This is, these five homes have been there for a long time. And we were there without complaint until this year when things really got bad. And, um, and until a, a family with small children moved in and literally couldn't get fuel. And that did get to all of us saying, why are we being treated so differently here? And we don't have to go into the reasons, but what we do need to do is have, I think. Are you asking us to pay for it as well? I am. I think I want the same treatment as McCullough Hill and East Bear Swamp Road. Yeah. Can I just clarify McCullough Hill? I remember that being a conversation that we had prior to anyone doing a petition. We've talked about that for years because it's a hassle for the plows. But and I, yes, sir? I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to read the record. So McCullough Hill was a warrant hearing. We went through the process that Rob's talking about. The select board took it upon itself, just like it took it upon itself, to downgrade five roads in 2019 and then one more road in 2021. There was a, there was a, the board held a hearing and made a finding and they actually, I think, uh, and there was a decision that was made afterward that was formal that was reported in the land record. So it wasn't something that people just came to the board and asked them. We went through it, it was noticed, we advertised, I know because they did the advertisements. So Mike, that's the process that, that Rob's talking about that board went through that when they upgraded that elbow of McCullough Hill Road. Wait, there was a hearing in connection yes. with McCullough yes. Hill Road? Yeah. yeah. There was a hearing and there was a process. I know. Oh, that's, that, all right, that's, that's thank you. That's news to me. It's not reflected in these minutes. I would like to make a formal request tonight for all the documents around that hearing and all the documents around Center Road because Center Road has repeatedly been given to us as a reason and the budget there for why well, I'll be, I'll be happy to get whatever documents I have for uh, McCullough Road. I'm not sure I know about Center Road. We couldn't hear what you were saying. I said I, I can you know easily get the documents for McCullough Hill Road, but I, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about with Center Road. Are you talking about when the interstate was put in? No. Let's take it one at a time. So when I learned about McCullough, all I learned about were the minutes that I provided to the, the board. If there's more to it than that, yeah, I'd like to know. So if you, if you want to give it to me informally, great. Otherwise, let's yeah, make it formal. Yeah, it's in the office. We'll go through it. I okay, that, great, that sir. All right. So I think, I think potentially where we are tonight. I'm, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, thanks. Uh, um, so I had a question then, and I'm not sure if for McCullough, I, you know, I haven't followed this stuff on a town basis, but for McCullough's upgrades, if the local people on the road paid for it, like you, you were suggesting earlier that we would, you know, probably do, uh, that was your initial, you know, uh, you know, deduction about the, the likely procedure um, that we would have to pay for it. And then Sarah Lund came on and, you know, she asked uh, what that procedure would be uh, based on her previous communications and it sounded like uh, the town would come in and we would be and they would be 
discussing with each landowner uh, for various segments of the road, you know, uh, whether or not the upgrade could occur, whether or not it was feasible, whether or not it, it was, you know, going to ultimately be able to produce a class three road. And so if you, if you have to do that for five different landowners without a plan in, in mind, it's very easy for you to come across a stumbling block two years down the road where you say, well, it's just unacceptable to update this portion of the road of this 0.4 miles. And so the whole effort is for naught. So that should be avoided. You know, with a plan. Uh, I think the way I think the way the, the process goes, and help me out here, Victor, or anybody else, is what we would we would look for as as the residents on the road to come to us and say, you know, here's the plan. We're going to widen the road. We're going to do this. We're going to do that to bring it up to the class three standards. And then it's up to you folks to decide how you. How you divvy up the cost of that? If if it got if it got to that point, it's not that it would be considered, you know, five individual right. sections yes, that would upgrading because that that doesn't work that doesn't work for anybody. What what I was about to say, and uh, and I'd be very interested in hearing from the other board members, but I think we're at the point where um, I don't think it makes any sense to uh, ask for. Uh, a petition with five percent of the voters to have the hearing. If we can, if we can have a hearing, I say we have a hearing and we 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 do the process. I mean, what I what I want to warn you about is is we've still got our road policy in front of us, and our road policy says that it's up to the landowners to pay for the upgrade. So it's one thing to say we'll go through the process for the upgrade. And we haven't had any testimony or anything about what the potential cost of this is. We have, from the town's point of view, we have no money in our budget to do any of this proposed work. So, you know, is it going to be a bond issue? Where's the money going to come from if the town's going to do it, if the town's even willing to do it, or the select board's even willing to do it? Um, so I just, I'm, I'm fine, and I don't know how the other board members feel with going ahead with the hearing, getting getting some of the evidence, more information, and, and looking at this. But I don't want you to think that because we're potentially agreeing to have a hearing that we're agreeing that we're potentially going to pick up the cost of this. And I don't even know what the cost is. So, Well, you said earlier that the road policy is subject to the state statute. The yep. state statute says it's discretionary. And we know from McCullough that Vic and other landowners, and Vic owns all the 0.4 mile stretch, or one half of it. Um, and it's 0 0.31 miles. Okay, well, it's a 0.4 mile stretch, and as I look at the no trespassing signs there, virtually all of it, or okay, 80% of it is you. And um, so he's got the road in front of his property, and the road where his businesses are, plowed in both ways, and I don't have any part of mine plowed. I don't have any businesses I, there. I don't think, was he asked to pay for it in 2015? So I, I know I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, and if I'm saying it wrong, somebody please correct me. But the whole, uh, the whole situation at McCullough Hill was that it was done for the convenience of the town. Yes. We kept hearing from the road crew that they were expending extra fuel, extra time, extra mileage on the truck, because they would drive down the road to that little short section which was in class three. They weren't allowed to drive through that because it was close in the winter time. So they had to turn around and go back to the town garage or the town pit or wherever the sand was and come back. Expensive. So they came to the town and said, it makes sense. There isn't that much work to do to bring the road up to class three standards. And we strongly recommend you do it. So with that, we went through the hearing process. And it's true, we did hear from landowners who were concerned. They had concerns about traffic and other concerns about what this, what this upgrade would mean. But that was an upgrade that was initiated by the town, not initiated by residents. Paul has his hand up. I'm sorry. Paul has his hand up. Yes.
Hey guys, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. So I, I just want to give a little bit of history just with with the McCullough Road thing. I, I know it's it's kind of seems like it's been thrown in the midst of this. Uh, every, everything that Peter said was correct. Uh, you know, we, we actually cut off a half an hour worth of uh, plow, plow, routine plow and sand time from our route, given that we're now able to use that as the through road. Um, the second part of that is we were actually using two private driveways uh, to turn around in, which we would ultimately have to go back and fix up in the spring because those two private driveways were, you know, we were responsible for causing the damage. So there was some additional cost and, and labor and material uh, included in, in just the annual maintenance every year. Uh, the second part of that that I kind of want to emphasize is that McCullough Road is a through road. Um, number one, there, there, we do use that to go through, and it also relieved a lot of mud season pressure off of Center Road and Brook Road. So we actually saw those roads taking less traffic on during mud season, especially uh, Center Road. Um, you know, so there was there was actually a, a lot more benefit that that at the time myself and Steve Martin did not even see forecasted for for the upgrade of McCullough Road. Um, I know for a fact that it's it's a lot more used. I know some you know residents weren't weren't too thrilled about that. Um, ultimately, though, safety wise, when we when we've had closures on both Brook Road and Center Road, McCullough Road has has given some relief to that other road. So, like I said, there's there's been a lot more uh, you know a lot more benefits of that road being upgraded than simply uh, for for a particular landowner or. Um, you know, a, a financial thing. There's, there's been a lot of long-term benefits for that. So I just wanted to make sure that that's, uh, you know, that that's noted. You know, there was a lot, a lot of thought in, you know, thinking around that when, when we did that. And ultimately, it, it was, you know, we always tried to upheld, uphold, uh, for the better of the town as a whole. And, and that particular road definitely, um, you know, it definitely stood, stood by that. And for the record, Vic was not on the board, nor was he road commissioner during that time. Correct. Correct. And I wasn't a petitioner. No, and he, I don't even I didn't petition to have it upgraded. I'm aware of that. I'm asking if you were asked to pay in the same way that Dan is being asked to pay or others are being asked to pay. And it wasn't an informal petition. Why would I be asked to pay if I wasn't a petitioner? I don't understand that. Are you saying tonight, Vic, that you want me alone to pay for this? as the only informal petition. Where did that come from? I didn't say that. I don't understand that, no. I didn't say well, that. Well, Dan is here tonight in the same way that you sat there in 2015. He's not a petitioner, he's not. He signed a petition at the request of Peter to see if he joins in what, or agrees so with what So therefore he is a petitioner. He is a petitioner. He is okay, a petitioner. You know, I came here September 6th, and I made the petition informally, the same as your neighbor did in 2015. And that I was, was my neighbor. All right. Scotty Brown. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I am the equivalent of Scotty Brower in 2015. And I was asked by you, well, how do the other people feel? And I said, well, I'd rather keep, keep them out of it for the reasons I've tried to describe and have been limited to. Mm -hmm. But I did show in writing that they all support this. And there too, I was told that if I showed that, I would have at least one vote. Here's I don't. I, I, by the way, disagree with that, Mike. I never told you you would have my vote. I said it would make your case stronger, is what I said, I believe. I think you said but, it would be enough for you, and anyway, I try to confirm that. In I just want to chime in with some more facts. I have a, uh, and I'll be happy to share this with you, Mike. So, in my file, my McCullough Hill Road file, the petition of approximately 84, 91 signatures of people who petitioned the board to ask for, to request the upgrade of McCullough Hill Road back in 2014-15. Uh, so there's copy here. The, the the board had to take it up because it was it was a petition request. It wasn't something that the board did just on its own. The, Thank the you, sir. My, requirement of signatures. Yeah. My only knowledge of McCullough Hill is what's in the minutes, and that doesn't mention. Well, there's a lot more. Okay, well, that, thank you, and I'll look at that. So to bring the hearing, the, not the hearing, but the discussion tonight to some kind of conclusion, are we as the select board willing to have a hearing on this matter without asking uh, 
asking these folks to get a petition with 5% of the voters. I mean, for me, I think it makes sense to do it, but I don't know how we, other well, people. Well, my question is, do we, at that hearing, have to come up with a decision as a select board right then and there whether we're going to ask the residents to pay for the upgrade or that we will pay for the upgrade? When does that decision get made when you have that hearing? Well, there we the answer. Yeah. Sat, you're on mute, Rob. Uh, I oh, there you go. Like no, that. you're good. Uh, so the way that the statute is written uh, is it allows, basically, you after you hold your hearing, you have 60 days to, to file written findings with, with Sarah's office and to notify all, all the petitioners and interested parties of what your decision is. So... Uh, Let's just take a hypothetical. Let's say you, you hear all the evidence and you decide that the public good requires a reclassification of this section of South Bear Swamp from class four to class three. You would, you would make that order. That order would get recorded at the town clerk's office. And as of that time, this section of the road would become class three. But as part of your order, you can also require that the petitioners must bear the expense of bringing the highway, this portion of the highway anyway, up to class three standards. So they would then have to do that. If they did not do that, then I would anticipate what would happen in the future is you've, you've now got a short, at least, at least a section of of a town highway that has been reclassified to class three, but it's not up to class three standards, which is not a, a good situation to say the least. So if for whatever reason, the petitioners did not comply with your order that you set forth in the, in the reclassification order to be responsible to bring the road up to class three standards, you could then later on your own motion do another classification proceeding and put it back to class four. So those that's usually the way in which it works. And that's usually the incentive to get the petitioners to uh, provide the contribution necessary to, to bring the, the road up to standards. And again, I, I should add that uh, under the statute, I think Mike pointed this out before, a decision to require, uh, you don't have to require the residents, land, the petitioners to foot the bill in that way, but you have the right to do that. It's discretionary. Can I make one last comment? Yes. Um, so I just wanna, I, I wanna acknowledge that um, I appreciate you know Mike bringing this to the select board and working with his neighbors. Um, but I also want to just state that I take a little bit of offense at this accusation that we as a select board are deliberately or sort of, you know, doing something to keep people not safe. And that, that you need to be treated like everyone else in town. And the reality is that most people in town, a lot of people live on private driveways, people who live on class four roads that have, have knowingly moved in. And in fact, I'd love to live on a class four road because it would get graded once in a while, but I don't. I live on a private driveway. We plow it, we sand it. We can't get an oil guy up there in the middle of winter. It's really hard because we live in a steep driveway. And I just wanna say that we are a group of volunteers here who are doing our best to, to meet the needs of the town, knowing that we're not always gonna be able to meet everyone's needs. And I think, Mike, you have the right spirit in that you are you know, requesting this. I think, frankly, it's actually a fairly valid request. I know this road very well, um, but I would appreciate it if you approached it in a way that was a little 
um, friendlier and less accusatory because we want to do what's right by the town. We want to consider this, but we don't, I don't want to be accused as someone who is deliberately not taking care of our townspeople. So I just want to put that out there that I, I kindness that. goes a long way and friendliness and not the, you know, your, your, um, your immediate sort of moving into lawyer mode and making me feel threatened by your words. So I just want to make that clear. I appreciate you saying that. So the, the, no vote had been taken on this until now. There were four things you know, said at the last hearing that um, the things that have been where I have been um, vilified have nothing to do with the road. They all occurred before. And um, so I did make this request because of changes in the road this year that are very specific. And I was bothered. But I wanted to keep it all private. I said that to Peter. Um, and I would like very much to just have a thumbs up vote to this because I do see the vilification, the prior vilification that has very much been directed to me and I will tell you at some point in writing so you have it. It's more of a human resources thing, frankly, but I will tell you of it. But um, because now it has spread to not just hurt me, but to hurt my neighbors. And that I will not abide by. So um, I'm sorry if it seems lawyerly to you. I have worked patiently with the town for many years to try to say, well, can we do this? Tell me what the cost would be. I'll do it. I was told, well, I, I did not get a direct answer. So um, that is my concern. And I'm not, this is not lawyer mode. This is just English. This is just what I've said and what has happened to me. So just to, just to focus on the issue at hand here, um, I would like to suggest two things. I would like to suggest a process whereby we look at maintenance of the class four road to improve the situation that exists now, which I would hope could happen in the short term. And I would suggest that, that process would be that Eric and Victor would go out and um, meet with uh, you and your neighbors and agree what work they can do to improve the washout damage on the, on the class four road to in the short run, make that situation better. That's number one. Number two, um, I would propose, and it's going to be a select board vote, but I would propose that we agree to hold a hearing on this matter about the uh, upgrade to class three. And not require you to do the uh, yeah, petition I, process. I agree to go way. forward with a, agree to go forward with a process. Okay. Is your attorney okay with your meeting? Because he objected to it the day afternoon before it was supposed to happen last time. He only objected to that because he said it should be something that happens at a select board meeting, which is what's going on exactly right now. So no, it is, com it is common, just, just let me finish, it's common practice for our road commissioner and road foreman to go out and meet with residents about maintenance problems on town roads. Um, and I, I misspoke when I said I would agree to meet with you and I've apologized to you about that. But we're here right now, so that's what we're, that's what we're considering. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, I think John Lund called me and he wanted to know if we could come over and make a grading before winter. If we can grade the road. <clears throat> and we have plans to do that. We haven't done it yet. Um, I don't know if you're aware of how much we have to do and the fact that we didn't have any help for a couple of months and we didn't have a foreman until July 5th. That's kind of put us behind and we have a road that we have to maintain up here uh, on, on, the, on the Center Road. We have sand to do or did and we, and we have gravel crushing that we're doing and we, you know, we just, we haven't had time yet, but I, I'm, I'm sure Eric, if he was here, would, would say that he was planning to do that. But I don't know if that's going to be good enough for you. 
It doesn't sound like it. You're going to, because that's not going to help your plowing. You've gone from a class four, we'll maintain it and we'll grade it like we do. Uh, some other, we don't grade every town, every class four road in town. Um, but we don't plow them. Uh, I'm not aware of any class four road that we plow. But you're asking us to plow it. I am this year. I mean, for eight years we didn't. I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. But then this year when things got to where they are and with the difficulties we had last year with oil not being delivered, that's when I did say, yeah, I think it's time. With five families there, I do think it's time. And so you are, so what in essence, I, if we're going to plow it, I think what Peter's saying, though, it has to be upgraded to a class three or we can't plow it. And, that, and that's why we've said, if that's the case, then let's upgrade to class three. So I, would, I think that that process would, would be handing Mike and those five families a copy of the specifications that the road needs to meet to they make a class it. three. They have. And, and have, have them entertain what the cost of, of upgrading that is. Because for one, until anybody understands what those costs are, I don't think that anybody can make a, a decision to know what's feasible and not feasible for anybody, whether it's for you or for the town. Um, I personally uh, do not support um, upgrading that section to a class three without, with the town's resources. Um, at what point do we look at the fact that I have a driveway that's a third of what you guys want to maintain here? I've got to maintain that myself. The class four, everybody that bought on that, whether you knew or not, they need to maintain that. I have a driveway that length too, and I'm not asking anybody to do my driveway, Randy. So I, I just, it would be a different story for me if. Like Paul was saying, it was a through road or something like that that made connections to, to a larger portion of traffic, um, lots of other considerations. Um, well, you know, I, I wasn't around with when East Bear Swamp took place or when um, the whole action that you feel vilified for. So I, I too take offense to, to you coming to to this body and, and projecting that on us and saying that's why we stop uh, this from moving forward. Because I personally only know what you spoke of tonight. Um, I, I think that's the first step. Before we even have a hearing, I think if we want to have this conversation in a further manner, I think we should hand them the specs for a class three road and don't you think all that would be brought out at the hearing, though? I just think the hearing is the, is the process. They should definitely have the specs. They should definitely understand that the result of this may be that, you know, we say to them, if, if you want it to be class three, you're going to have to upgrade it. But go through the follow-up process. I mean, here, you call it a hearing, but actually we, we go out there and look at it. Is that correct? No. As part of the hearing you do, yes. As part of the hearing you go out and look at it. But, but, but I, just, I just want to back up a minute because, you know, we have, we have over the years made an effort to grade and repair culverts on sections of Class 4 road which service residents where they need, where they need access to their property. Most I mean, of the Class 4, not all of them, but, but we've, made an effort, we've made an effort to do that when it was possible to do it. When it was possible and when there weren't higher ranking priorities or they ca came upon the time. Absolutely. The big Absolutely. difference here, I feel, is that we're not just being asked to grade the road once every three years or once every you know, two years or once a year even. It's, we want you to grade the road, we want you to maintain the road, we want you to plow the road. Randy, all, I'm, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, I understand what they are asking for, but I would tell you right now, okay, there's a serious program problem about how passable that road is. And to say and agree 
that we would try and grade it, which I think we've already agreed to, that we would try and grade it before winter time and make it better. And uh, Eric was talking about even, even potentially putting a, a truck or two load of material in there so the water could run off, run off into the ditch. I think it's appropriate for us to consider doing that and not say, you know, we have to deal with this whole issue and get to the end of the plowing in the class three issue before we can do that. There is a problem there right now. I think and that's I think a, we want to address it. I think I that's agree. a different conversation. No, that's that's bigger, all I'm that's all I'm saying. Is I'm I'm saying that that's why I said this is this is two different things. Yeah. And and thing number one, um, I think we can substantially improve in the near future. Exactly when it can happen uh, is going to be up to up to Vic and Aaron. But there is a huge washout down that hill, and it's a pro it's a problem. Well, one of the problems is that there's not much gravel in there. And you're just, you're just trying to grade the stones. Randy, if I may just add one more thing uh, in regards to the plowing, I, I know that this could potentially be a, a rabbit hole. I just want, want to remind the board members who have been part of it, the ongoing discussions with Brian Redmond on the class four section of Notch Road leading up to the town forest. Um, and that that has been an ongoing issue, which I, I believe we haven't heard much of lately, but they'll open that can of worms and it's going to get extremely messy extremely quickly because that has been an ongoing issue for, I, Peter, I'm thinking probably the best they're part of three, three years now. Longer than, longer than that. Longer than that. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I just want to keep that in the back of the board's mind and, and maybe just, you know, so Mike knows that that this isn't something that, that happens a lot and, and it's not taken lightly because of, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of safety issues um, and funding issues that, that go into all of these things. Well, so again, to get to the chase here, I think what you're hearing from us is some work is going to be done on that road in the near future before winter. I can't promise you when it's going to be, but it's but it's on the list, and the work is to be done. So, in terms of in terms of the other issue, which is the upgrade issue, uh, my recommendation would be that we have a hearing and we get the evidence and exactly what you're talking about, Randy. Find out what the cost is. Find out what's involved. Whether it's the town paying for it or the residents paying for it, we should go out and inspect the road and see what it is. I did go out and. And, and look at it kind of in preparation for the night, just so I was sure I had a, a good updated view of, uh, of what the road is. But I think we do, and, and I, I understand what everything says, but in prioritizing where we do work on class four roads, it should be where we have, where we have residents who need access. There are lots of class four roads where that is not an issue. Does your, do your, just out of, a question of uh, do your uh, neighbors and you uh, have a problem with uh, grading that road all the way through? Yeah, I think. Um, do you want that to be a class? Let three? me speak only for me. Yeah. Uh, for me, I don't want it graded or plowed all the way through. I like the country nature of it. That's what I, I do. Yeah, I and I, and that, I think yeah. there are, uh, let me not speak for the others, but I'm not seeking that. I'm, look, South Bear Swamp Road is plowed for 1.6 months. Why not 1.9? That, that's my only point. Well, you can sort of find out more points that way. Why not? It's, you, know, you gotta stop somewhere. Right, stop. But, but it's only prudent to go and, you know, I may be getting Smashed here by my fellow select board people, but I mean, if we do it, if we agree to do that, I think it's only prudent to go all the way through and make that a through road to uh, East Bear, so that you have an alternate route. I've heard many people say that I can't get down East Bear, so I had to go through South Bear, which you can do now. I mean, you can drive through there if you. If you have a four-wheel drive vehicle, in the three months a year you can, or nine months a year you can. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think um, 
my point is, um, you know, any road that's three or four can be upgraded or downgraded anytime. We can stop East Bear Swamp here or here or back here, upgrade, downgrade, change it all to a trail if you want to. You have extraordinary discretion. You gotta do it for the right reasons, but you have extraordinary discretion. And all I'm saying here is, if on East Bear Swamp you're going to go an extra half mile, and in South Bear Swamp you already go 1.3 or 1.6, why not go another three tenths? Now if it's going to cost X, back in 2019 I said, look, if it's going to cost an extra X amount of dollars to plow another few hundred yards to get to my driveway, which is, you know, I'll pay for that plus 50%. The town would have made money. And so it couldn't have been a budget issue. I think the problem is Mike, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna cut, I'm gonna cut you off. Sorry? Yeah. What was that right? I think what we need to do is make a decision about whether we're gonna have the hearing, what the next what the next step is. And well, Andy, what did you say to that? I, what was your question, your response to Go that? ahead, Randy. I was just gonna say that the minute somebody takes an offer and throws it out there like that and we do it for you, we have to do it for fifty other people. But if it's a budget and issue. And it's not, well, it, it might be a capacity issue and not necessarily a budget issue. It's an equity issue. Um, there are a lot of other issues, and, and it doesn't just come down to budget. If, if, if folks that, that have yeah, money in their that. wallet can afford to pay the town to come in and plow all their stuff for them, but then we have half the town that doesn't have that capability. I fully agree. It should be equity and transparency and... Um, yeah, look, let's, we're paying a lot of money right now to have the road plowed every, every winter. A lot of money. It's costing us a lot more than it would cost to simply have the truck go another couple hundred yards and pay that. But it would, the town would have saved money. We would have saved money. That was not an And everybody would have been treated better. And I was willing to pick it up and benefit five families. But that was not an option given. It didn't make sense to me. And, but it's within your power today to do the thing that does help the town and help five residents. I'm we sorry are. if we got off on the wrong foot in this board meeting. I, I give you my word under oath. There are things that happened before this road issue arose. That, those, those should be a completely separate issue. Well, then let's keep them separate and let's make this completely um, um, on, on its merits. I have one other question about this before. I know you want quick, so do I, but, what, what, you know, bring, Mike has brought up the point that, you know, many of us have been there for 30 years, you know, paying $1,000 a year for plowing, you know, and so this is coming from five different families along this road that have been there for, you know, decades, and so if there's any other equivalent of that in this town or surrounding towns, you know, that the town really realizes that it's a financial burden on that set of families. We do. You know, that that makes, is something to we take do. into consideration. We do, and we're aware of, you know, I, I'm not saying each one of us is aware of every situation in town, but we're certainly aware of where the private roads are, where the class four uh, roads are. I mean, absolutely we're aware of that. And yeah, yeah, I just didn't know how exceptional that was. No, it's not unusual at all. No, so as Liz pointed out, it's it's a very common uh, it's a very common common situation. It's a challenge. It, quite frankly, it's a challenge for us as a community. As the community grows, and as there are more and more houses on this on class four roads and on private roads, and 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 all these different things, it's a challenge for us to try and manage that in an equitable and fair manner. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, believe me, we 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 know. We know. Don't think we don't know. We do know. So. Well, I would be in favor of having a hearing only because it's just you know they will get their five percent signatures and we'll have to do it regardless. And there's a reason why in state statute there even is discussion of turning class th two fours into class threes. Right. This isn't like an unheard of request. Right. This is something that that happens. Right. So. You know, we we can if we vote against it, they'll get their five percent signatures. Probably is my guess. They'll go around. And people will say, "Sure, yeah, I think that's a good idea." I think they will. I and think so, they will too. And that's all I'm saying. Why? <laughs> right. Why? Why make them jump through that hurdle? We can we can agree tonight that we'll have the we'll have the hearing and initiate the process. Right. That's what I would. 
I mean, this has to be a vote, though. It doesn't I don't know if I don't know if Victor and Randy are ready to support that or not, or one of them is. One of them's good. <laughs> I just, I, I just, you know, I hate things. I mean, in a perfect world, I'd love to be able to tell you that that we'll be down there with 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 excavators and dump trucks and everything else, and, and make it a class three road for you because. It seems like it, it seems like a nice thing to do, but you've you've heard from other board members tonight about all the other issues, uh, all the other issues we face, and uh, and I need you to know this isn't an, it, this isn't attacked at you, Mike. I mean, I've got friends past you, right? Like that, I would love for them to. I, this isn't against you. This is clearly not just an easy decision that we can come up with because it does continue to set precedent that the Leland Farm Road people will be coming because there's all of that development coming up. This is just extra costs. And I read in there, I could actually petition to the town and say, I've got five people in my driveway. I can petition to the town and say, I want this to be, I can give you a, I can give you a place to turn around your plows. I can, I can do that. And they would likely say no, right? Even though there's five families and even though the fuel guy can't get up there. But we know that, like this, this is just, Middlesex, right? We've lived here, so you know, I, 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 you know, I commiserate with the families who live on that road. I really do. Like this is not, you know, I, I personally have the same thing. It's just not a class four that I live on. Ours is not a driver. Um, no, I know. Well, Can, I'm, saying. I'm sorry. I, I was just waiting for a bit, so I don't mean to interrupt. Um, but I, I do appreciate what you're saying, though. In the meantime if we could possibly get Vic and Eric um, to come up and maybe do a little something to the road. Cause I would say at this point in time, yes, my husband did call a while back. Um, and since then it has gotten substantially worse um, to the point that my nine-year-old son typically would ride his bike to um, the mailboxes. And we refuse to let him do that now because it has become such a safety issue for him. Um, so if we could at least get something like that repaired to where I know um, that it wouldn't be a hazard um, any longer. And then if we if we go forward um, with the hearing, that would be fantastic. But at least in the meantime, knowing that this isn't going to be a hazard any longer. And that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Sarah, I don't know if you heard that, but I think that that's where uh, the conversation's at already. Okay. Yeah, I know it kept coming up, but I wasn't sure. It didn't sound like we had agreed upon that. And I know when John previously called, it seemed a little unsure to him too, and even kind of came up and mentioned that, well, it could always go back to a trail, which was worrisome to us um, because I, I'm a, I, I work at U32, um, so I need to make it to school every day. Um, my kids need to make it to the bus stop. So that became a concern for us and why we pursued this due to the possibility to a, letting it go and, and becoming a trail or a hazard. Um, so I don't think, I don't, I'm not aware, of, I'm not aware of any discussion by anybody about throwing the road up or downgrading into a trail. So I don't it think you need to be. It was mentioned in passing when my husband had initially called about the problem. Yeah. It was mentioned to my husband in passing. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, so do we have to call a vote on it? whether or not we're going to have a hearing we should I think. okay so i move that we have a hearing to uh discuss the upgrade of like liz can i just if you're going to do that i would just revise just revise your motion to say and you i'll put this in the minutes but pursuant to vsa 19 section 709 to proceed the, to to begin the process for considering an upgrade of what point we, we need some mile we need definite mileage if okay. anybody has it of that portion of the road like that okay. so you can say a certain segment now but when i do the notices and they i'll put it make sure that we have a certain mileage that you guys are considering point four. Point four. Point four. okay point four from the class three section okay. uh, going going west or going east going um, from 323 to 406 oh, yep. and it's point three minutes oh, watch out right but I don't understand. If we we're gonna go. We're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a, a hearing on upgrading 
That's what she's listing is the motion for that class hearing. three, Title 19, Section 709. Right. And she's calling it four tenths of a row of a mile. But we just got done talking. I think it should be how far is it out the East Hill? Well, maybe we don't need to be that specific. Okay, yeah, so don't, I, I, I see where Victor's going. Uh, yeah. Just say, just to say for sections of South Bear Swamp, class four section of, of uh, South Bear Swamp. Okay, great. And it makes it sound like I'm being contrary. Wait, wait, Pete, Folks. Rob's turn. To, okay, go ahead, Rob. Folks, I think if you're going to make a decision tonight to schedule a statutory hearing, you really need to be make you need need to be clear as a board exactly what it is you're going to schedule a hearing about and not leave it to some future date to determine which portion of this road you're going to put before you know a, a hearing because that will require another formal vote from you you'll have to do that at another hearing so if a majority of the board is inclined to schedule a statutory hearing without the need for a petition, that's absolutely fine, but you should make a determination tonight as to what portion of the road you're talking about. And again, it doesn't have to be super specific, but you know, that point, the point, the point four mile section, you know, extending from the current terminus of the class three area is fine, something like that. But if, and if you don't have a majority that wants to do that, that's that's one issue and you'll know that tonight um but i wouldn't vote to just say we're going to schedule a hearing and we'll figure out later how much of the road we're going to subject to the hearing i don't think that's good policy okay i also think it gets a lot of trouble down the road <laughs> not to pun no pun intended um i i have i i second that um just only because i know previously it was discussed that if it was brought up to class three standard that we the the um homeowners would be responsible for the cost. And if we're going to extend it all the way through to East Bear, does that then become beneficial to the town and become a cost to the town? Or are we then required to foot the bill for that whole portion as well? That so that would be helpful, helpful for us to know. Different thing. I, I, I'm, I, I understand what you're saying, Victor, but I think- Well, it's I a benefit that, to doing it because you just said McCullough Hill Road was a plus because it was a through road. So to enforce, reinforce your case for upgrading the road, I would think you'd want to go all the way through. Does I, I'm speaking do... only for myself. I'm right, I understand very... you said that. I understand that very well, yeah. Does I understand that. No, it's there, the, where, where Menashe owns is already on the class three portion. Um, Correct. Um, all the way up to the top of the It's on the class four, but you can access that part through the class three. Right. But the part of Menage extends about 150 yards on the class four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it was Menage. It's been sold now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we have a motion on the floor. Well, no, we don't. Do we have everything point four? <laughs> so, what well, are you said? Point four. Yeah. yeah, point four. Okay, yeah. That's my motion is point four. So we need a second. Gentlemen. You don't have to vote on it if you second it, just so you know. <laughs> I don't believe I can second it. Why can't you second it? I don't think it's a chair. Well, Maybe we I should can. go for the five percent because I think two people don't even want to have a hearing. So I think we should probably go for the five percent. I think it's well. I mean, you can take a vote if you want, but it's pretty clear to me. We also have a th uh, another select board member who isn't here tonight. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, the motion dies for lack of a second. So. Uh, Alrighty. Your goal, Mike, is. Get that five percent, and we'll have the hearing. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I came here, and you know, um, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do at this point. Okay. Well, in the meantime, in the meantime, we're going to do the class four maintenance that we promised. In the meantime, you're going to what? Do the main the class four maintenance 
which we promised. Okay, well, I appreciate it. And uh, Victor, you'll get a hold of Mike or, or uh, Eric will. Why would we need Mike? We know how to create a road without Mike uh, telling us what to do. Okay, then maybe you don't need me. But I mean, do you want to know what what Eric was what Eric was talking about was was a little not a lot of material, but a little material just because of the lack of gravel on that steep. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to go either way, Vic. I'm happy to meet with you, but if you don't want to meet, I'm, that's your discretion. No, I don't. I just don't see the necessity at this time. But if we do, we'll give you a call. Simple as that. So the other, just just getting to that issue, if, if you're not going to go out there and, and meet with them. When I went out there, am I correct that there is no culvert at the end of your driveway? No culvert? There's a culvert across my, underneath my driveway, but no. At the end of the driveway, there's a culvert? Because I was, I was looking at how the road washed the... Water comes out of his driveway and washes into the road? No, it was it's the reverse. What, or what I observed was the reverse, is that the water comes down the hill over the ledge and curls around and goes on his land uh, because there's no culvert. So there's no ditch and there's no culvert. Yeah, yeah. And he's the one that lives sure. down in the ditch just after you come over the things. There's a pretty, the bottom of the pretty significant washout there. I yeah. drove through there today. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. So I think... The, the only reason I'm thinking for me well, is I, 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 there's what? like a million people talking right now. They're all, they're all okay. um, it was mentioned that one of the other select board members isn't present. Is it possible for them, if coming back to the minutes, to vote after this, or must they be present to vote? They have to be present. They would need to be present okay. to vote. And is it the five percent? Uh, signatures we need to get or 10 because I thought it was five before and then I thought five percent of the five percent of the registered voters okay Welcome okay thank you people right Sarah 75 that's the magic number all right got it thank you so so what I'm trying to suggest Victor is I, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe you go up there and look at it and say, no, that isn't that isn't necessary. But when I looked at it, it looked to me like it needed a culvert there. You want us to I don't know what you, I don't know what you thought when you looked at it today. I didn't look. At it. No, 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 Randy. Yeah, I would I would think that if Victor and Eric go up, they can come up with a plan. If if Mike needs a drive uh, culvert at the end of his driveway to rectify the issue, then at that point they can reach out and and discuss. Yeah, you know, I'll fine. leave it up to the experts. Yeah, no, that's one of them. Anything further, anyone? Mike, you have anything no, I'm, else? I'm set. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your time and patience. This has been a this has been a lot tonight. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night.